Hey. What's going on, sweaties? Hey. hey. What's up? Uh, what's up? What's up? <laughs> We're live, baby. It's, uh, it's episode 100. That's right. It's a super giant size, extra sweaty, super spectacular episode. And the only way to make it even more sweaty is there's so many people in this power-packed house. I'm going to get into introducing people right away, starting with the man right next to me, John Campia. What's going on? What's up, everybody? 100th episode. What, was, <laughs> was it just you and me sitting like, I at, like so. that, that little desk, like one foot apart? Yes, it was. For the was, first a, one? It was a, you know, me and John have been doing this for many years now, like four and a half years, and uh, John was like, hey, I think you should host this like like this nerd thing about superhero movies, and I was like, all right, let's do it. The back of the AMC days. Yep. You can watch those. Those are still on YouTube. It's got the red background. We turned green, son, for money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You know who's next to me? Also right now. Next is Robert Meyer Burnett. Hello there. It's great to be here. I, I, you know, since you invited me on this little uh, nerd journey with you, I think I've become a better person and a better man. I want to thank you for that. That's I right. How you bad that. were you before? That's right. I was, I was well, kind of like, I, I wasn't bad. I was drawn that way. <laughs> oh. oh. You know who else is drawn that way? Jeremy Johns. He's right here. Jeremy's uh, here. Well, I am bad, and I am drawn that way. Yeah, when, uh, thanks for having me on the 100th episode, Super Nerd Fest with the J Jacks Joker right yeah. behind me. I couldn't say no to that. We're, it's, a, it's a packed house tonight, my That's man. That's right. And you know what else? We're packed over in the other side. That's why we took over the Schmo set. Check it out. Look who's over there. We got Comic Book Girl 19. Hey, He's guys. in the house. Yeah, hey. I'm in the house. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And right next to her is David Griffin. What's happening? You know, he's a golfer. <laughs> that's right. Hey. Oh, that's right. He does golf. I forgot about that. Does it. David Griffin know. golf? He oh, does. It's great yes. sport. Yeah, it's great. I'm excited about it. Sorry, golfing and car racing. <laughs> Air <hockey>. Anyway, <laughs> and we've got Jason Inman right over here. I'm Jason. excited to join this power pack. I'm claiming the role as Franklin. <laughs> That's right. The power pack is in full house. Ashley V. Robinson, welcome back. Thank you so much for having me back. Uh, for claiming roles, I want to be Wonder Woman. So. All right. Well, I nice. think Good Comic trailer. Book Girl 19 is going to be Dazzler right off the bat. Yeah, that or Phoenix it. or Kid Omega, whatever. Yeah, you can take, <laughs> any, you can any, take any one of those. Well, got, got like a Quentin Quire hairdo going yeah, on right now. Yeah, it used to be pink. It was more Quentin Quire. Now it's, you know, Jokerish. <laughs> That's right. And Amy Dallin will be here. I'm sure she's, she's just stuck in traffic right now, so you'll see her uh, fun face later. My girl. Let's get right into it we're gonna get right into the very first thing and then we're gonna talk about the past so i'm gonna like ask everyone here what was what was the comic book movie or tv show or even comic book that influenced you when you were a kid a younger adult like when you were a youngster like we're, we're going like you know some of us are pretty damn old like myself so i'm like yo superman 1978 most of you freaks watching this don't we're not we're born after batman 1989 you don't even <laughs> superman that's from the Shh, olden days don't give anyway, away our secrets <laughs> look i saw superman 1978 when i was a kid f you if you got problems with that but you know whatever let's talk about it john what pops off to you you know it well, obviously, there's the Christopher Reeve Superman, right? Like when you were convinced for the first time ever that a man could fly. But the one that really stuck with me wasn't even on the big screen. It was on the small screen. It was The Incredible Hulk with Lou Frigno. And the one that really I remember a lot is the TV movie they did totally. when they introduced Thor. That was one of the... F I remember when I was younger, I thought that is, was the funniest shit ever. Is that I the thought, one where Bill Bixby like, falls out of the airplane at the end? No, that's that's the next one. Oh, okay. Yeah, was it the <laughs> that trial? was the death of the, the Incredible Hulk. That was the trial of the Incrededible Hulk. The trial Hulk. of the Incredible Hulk. Did that have, was that Daredevil. the one with Daredevil? Or yeah. was the, the trial of the, the Incredible Hulk is the Daredevil one. The return of the Incredible Hulk is the one I think you're talking about, with John. Thor. Yeah. yeah, with Thor, where they, you know, they find Thor in a crypt, and they have this weird rock and roll dude is I'm Thor and he's like just constantly drunk anyway it was hilarious it was awesome that's the one that stands out to me I got a just side comment about that that one pissed me off so much as a little nerd I was like that's not Thor you know it was made me so angry that other people was like I don't know why you like Thor so much he was pretty stupid in that Hulk movie it's very angering Robert <laughs> well I'd have to say uh, from the first season of the Croft Super Show it was Electro Woman and Dinah Girl <laughs> no I'm kidding uh -huh. Deirdre Hall was good as Electro Woman <laughs> No, I was a Justice League of America fan. Right on. I mean, that was my first comic book love, and I love the hour-long Super Friends animated series with Wendy and Marvin. Got it. See, a lot of people, they all drop Wonder Twins. Sure. I, I get it, Wonder Twin powers, but Wendy and Marvin were there before the Wonder Twins, man. Well, all I could say is, like the Joker, I'm glad they're dead. Well, you know, <laughs> Plastic Man dead. guest starred, Flash guest starred. Totally. I was a little bit of an ISIS man myself. Uh, 
Isis, the comic book character, the woman Isis. <laughs> Look it up, uh, Jeremy. <laughs> how about you? Still laughing about. Where and that heroes comic lasted could go. 100 episodes. Yeah, yeah. 100 episodes, folks. Good night. Uh, yeah, for me, it's actually right behind me. It's the 1989 Batman because I, I grew up on the. Uh, we had this VHS tape with. It was like a hodgepodge, as you would do. You would just record stuff on TV. So my dad was recorded like. 10 episodes of stuff and he was like that'll keep him entertained and it was uh, one of them was a super friends like the meanwhile in the halls of justice yeah. that one and it was it was a war of the worlds episode where these balls came down and grew legs and they just and, and they were just wreaking havoc on the earth but it was very much war of the worlds and they somehow had kryptonite cables because lord knows where these people came from <laughs> but uh, so then the uh, and everyone knew the Adam West Batman, right. and so my uncle is like, "Hey!" So he takes my brother to go see the 1989 Batman, the Burton Batman, right? And I'm I'm left, I don't know where I was, but I didn't see it with them, and so I'm like, "I need to see the movie." Like, come on, how could you take him and not me? So he takes me, and there was a little kid dressed as Batman and a little girl dressed as like Batgirl, and the manager of the theater. Like, I worked at the theater. We I never did this. I was never as cool as this guy was. And so he, he brings me up like, oh, let's give him a round of applause. And they dressed up. It was the first time I ever saw cosplay before it was called cosplay. I was like, that's so cool. You can dress up for movies. That's so rad. And so then I saw this movie, and uh, Jack got dropped into the acid. It was, just, it, was, it was such a jump, a leap between what I saw on TV and what I saw in the movies. It was just such a different experience that it just brought it on course. It's one of the best cinematic experiences I've had, but it's just in my head. Like, that must be... I, I feel like I loved the Joker before that, but uh, Jack really brought it home for me, and I just love that movie. Well, I was going to say a shout-out to the original Batman. That's what I, I grew up watching in black and white. My parents didn't have a color TV when I was a youngster, so I, I actually thought it was just black and white. That's what I thought it was. <laughs> but the Joker and all those characters, something I loved. And then, of course... Bill Bixby's The Hulk and Wonder Woman. Let's go over to you, Ashley. What 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 influenced you when you were a kid? Um, because I was born after the first Tim Burton movie dropped. Oh, that's um, right. It was all <laughs> Batman the Animated Series all the oh, time. Oh, it's one of the oh, best yeah. animated series ever made. It's the greatest. And the cool thing about that is you get both Dick Grayson Robin and Tim Drake Robin. And if you know me, you know that Robin is my favorite character. And as a six-year-old with the conundrum of, do you want to be Robin or do you want to kiss Robin? It's really like heartrending and it's stuck with me all this time. <laughs> well, you had both then. You had both. You have with those two characters, you have both, definitely. <laughs> and what about the person that you kiss regularly, Jason? Uh, well, I also kiss uh, Superman regularly, too, so uh, right. <laughs> don't worry about that. Uh, Death of Superman is where I got into the love of comic books. And I remember I bought this trade of Death of Superman in this really terrible gas station. I was like, oh, yeah, Superman died. That was the thing that happened. And I had it for years. I read it over and over and over. And it was the event because all the people showed up for his funeral. And I was like, who are all these people? It was the first time I knew there was a shared universe. And fun story, last year I actually got Dan Jurgens to sign that copy of me. And he looked at it and he was just, it was so, it's so ratty. I still have it. And he was like, wow, you've read this a lot. And I was like, yeah, Dan. I did. <laughs> nice. Dan Jurgens is a really, a really great sweetheart, awesome, talented writer and artist. David Griffin, how about you? I actually got my start reading comics late. You know, I was uh, already out here boo. for like tw oh, no, boo. <laughs> hey, everyone Better has late to than start never. somewhere. Better late than never. Yeah, I was probably like 25, <laughs> so it's been probably seven years ago. And somebody told me, I was like, you know, you should start this book called The Walking Dead. You start checking that out. So I started picking up The Walking Dead. This was before the TV show was announced. I read it, and I just fell in love with it when the series first came on. I actually remember going to the red carpet premiere at Arclight Hollywood for the first episode. I sat next to Bernthal. It was just like a row, uh, you know, row behind me, and it was wow. fantastic. I didn't even know who he was at the time, and I just loved that world of The Walking Dead. Kind of out of it now, but I still enjoy reading the comics and just the lore surrounding The Walking Dead. That was my first jump, heavy jump, into comic books. David, were you surprised when you found out that comic books had color? <laughs> yeah. no, I, mean, I, I didn't see comic his books, parents but... couldn't afford color comic books yeah i mean because once i got into that all my friends were like we well, got to read watchmen and you got to read v for vendetta and you got to read all these like old classics and i started doing that too so i, I knew about color so have you not read like any like kitty comics like have you ever read an archie comic no you gotta get no, it. Well, Richie Rich or I read the Joker. Far Side. Is the Far Side a comic? The Far yeah. Side. Yeah. 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 That is it. That's yeah. a real comic yeah. script. Don't ever let anybody <laughs> tell you wrong. That's you know, and it's really funny. Nineteen. How about you? Well, I mean, for me, definitely the thing that flipped a switch in my brain was the X-Men cartoon series in 1994. Oh, yes. It changed my life. It, <laughs> it changed my life. The show changed my life. And uh, I wouldn't be here and who I am today without that cartoon. And also, I would like to give a big shout out to uh, Graham Morrison's new X-Men run. Uh, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I loved his run on new X-Men. He made me finally understand Scott Summers in a way that I never understood him before. I always thought he was a square. And then after reading that, I was like, 
dude, Team Summers, like, all the way. <laughs> That's right. Also, uh, in seventh grade, I was hugely influenced by an indie comic book from Slave Labor Graphics called Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. I just want to give an indie comics thing right now. Well. It's actually black and white. It's not in color. Yeah. It's for all the goth kids, little goth kids, you know. And eventually, actually, those comics did get confiscated by my parents. Uh, but not before I had taken them on a band trip and passed them around to every wow. kid I could and proliferated them and already ruined everyone's brains. Well, 19, I'm, a fr I'm friends with Jonan. I'll have him come on the show. You'll have to be there. You oh, get, yeah. You get him to like, sign oh, I'd all love that it. Stuff. I would love it. Yeah, he gets all it. like, he'll get squirrely, but oh, you know, he does he, I met him once at a con and he was really did, was weirded out by me. But he, I think he's weirded out by everybody. That's just he's weirded out. He he's filled with hatred and anger. But, you know, just like his comics, up, which he's, really spoke to me as a seventh grade. No, he's a sweetheart. He's a really nice guy. So, you know what's awesome? You guys who watch the show and you provide us with so much fan art. You like drawing all of us weirdos who, who are sweated out for you guys every day, every week. And so over the last couple of, of years while we've been doing the show, collecting all that fan art, and I want to uh, just do a fan art tribute. We've cut this together. Uh, it, it took me longer. I th the reason I thought it would take about four hours, it took about like 11 hours. <laughs> um, so here we go. Let's rock into that first segment. Hello, this is George Perez, and to all of you watching Collider Heroes, congratulations on your 100th episode. Hey there, happy 100th episode, Collider Heroes. Never doubt it for a second. Hey, Collider Heroes, it's me, Chris Burnham. Happy 100th birthday, guys. That is amazing. Hi, this is Bill Sienkiewicz, here at Cancer's Deli in Los Angeles, wishing Collider Heroes a happy 100th episode. Collider Heroes, coming to save the day. Hosted by John Schnepp and Fram, superheroes on every Tuesday. Well, I don't know what you've been told, but the heroes are on the case. To bring you so much comic book news that you might not feel your face. Yeah, you might not feel your face. Collider is the place, yeah! That's right, the real so sweaties. So much good stuff. Yes. So oh, yeah. much good stuff. Yeah, all of us were just like, wow, this is some incredible stuff. It was really fun. You know, that's, everybody kept throwing stuff in. And, and anybody who were stragglers, we're going to have your stuff in episode 101, the straggle episode, which will be like, you know, there'll be a segment for the stragglers. So the stragglers. Speaking of stragglers. <laughs> the straggle is real. Oh my God. <laughs> Speaking of stragglers. <laughs> yeah. Transformation is happening. Rock. Jeremy Johns, goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for being part one. And here's Amy Dallin. Amy's Bye. here. Hey. Hey. Glad you can make it. So many of my favorite people are here. I'm really sorry, Jeremy. Hey, <laughs> he's the same question, he wants though, to right? go. He say, I, "I can go sleep now." He's totally fine. <laughs> he to wants to go sleep. What was Yo, your that favorite? Art. Oh. What's your favorite uh, inspirational uh, movie or TV series or comic book character when you were a kid? The thing that that sort of turned the corner for yeah. me. Uh, there were lots of sort of like early comics here and there. Like I, obviously, I saw some Archies. My my aunt brought back some Asterix that I was just like. Fascinated by it, but uh, I'm with 19. It was X-Men the Animated Series. Nice. That really opened up the doors. A, for amazing, yeah. rad, larger-than-life comic book storytelling, and B, for one of the best female casts of any show yeah. ever. Uh, as they came straight from the comics. So nice. good job, Claremont. Well, you know what? Now let's move into another segment right now, because we are in the second segment, and it's going to be called The Present. And we're just going to talk about like all the movies and TV shows that we've been experiencing. It is the golden age to, of, of comic book movies and television and you know we were talking about earlier before we even started the broadcast was like hey let's talk about those like the the, the shows that we can count on our fingers you know what i mean uh, like back when there wasn't anything really superhero related it was like one batman movie every like nine years it was like seemed like an eternity we did get the batman the animated series we got a lot of animated series way more than we got any kind of TV shows or movies, yep. and that kind of all changed when, when we got Blade, and then X-Men, and then Spider-Man, and that kind of launched a lot of people like, hey, let's take some chances. 
a pretty rough start, I would say. We got League, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Gentlemen, which was horrible. I mean, there's a bunch of road bumps along the way until we got to movies like Batman Begins. We got Iron Man. Let's talk about the present day, which is what I would consider all the way up to Man of Steel. So let's go from X-Men to uh, the current, the very, the very first Man of Steel, because that's where Man of Steel for me is. It feels like once they get into Avengers and Man of Steel, which is like 2012, 2013, we enter this different phase of of movies and television shows where it's literally we're getting 15 or 20 of these every year, which is insane. It's literally insane that there's so many. Just the CW alone has like five animated, like live action superhero series. It's yeah, crazy. It's nuts. Um, let's start with you, Amy. What what in the present day right now? Really, really, you're, you're super excited that you're you're into. Well, mostly, I, I think we're all just trying to like stop and enjoy this moment because it would be nice if this lasts forever. It would be amazing, but whether or not it does, we all get to be alive right now, watching this happen, watching these characters explode into the consciousness of millions of people in a way that they haven't necessarily had a chance to. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying the sort of multi-fronted approach right now. The fact that we've got companies going gangbusters on the big screen and like solid superhero universes. Like for me, the ones really doing it for me right now are DC TV and Marvel movies right. uh, and Marvel Netflix. There's a lot of good stuff, uh, but those are the the ones really fulfilling the promise of what you can get from these superhero universes that we've spent like 75 years enjoying on paper that haven't necessarily gotten to have all the virtues and possibilities of comic book storytelling. On the, in other media. Really well said. I like that you differentiated like the DC television world and the Marvel movie world are really the ones that are hitting it on all the pistons. And while They're the, the other ones that ones make been, me feel like yeah. I'm really seeing comics happen. Yeah. Uh, and and it's not that there isn't great stuff in other areas as well. But if I if I have to play favorites, David, how about you? I think it's incredible that we're getting shows like Legion right now. I yeah. mean, a oh, character yes. that isn't even in the comic book universe isn't the most popular. I mean, he doesn't have the longest run compared to like a Batman or a Superman. And FX is dedicating all this time to explore, you know, Charles Xavier's son, right. which is just incredible. You know, I mean, Dan Stevens has killed it on that show. That's the show that has me the most uh, enraptured right now. I mean, I, I do love the CW shows. I watch all four of them. We are getting a fifth one, you know, and uh, Black Lightning coming well, out soon. there's five if you count Vixen, which has its second that's true. season right that's now. That's true. The end, that's true. The yeah. animated. So, um, but I think for me right now, it's Legion for sure. I just, it's an incredible show. Let me back that up. I just watched, I caught up finally with Legion and my God, that, that series is just incredible. And they're not playing it safe. Bonkers, yeah. insane, nutty. Even at the <laughs> fifth episode, I'm no spoilers, but I was like, what the fuck are they doing to my <laughs> mind? It was like, what's going on? I can't wait to watch the next episode. It's been a long time since I felt that excited and freaked out and weirded out, but into a series. So that that's one for me as well. Robert, how about you? Well, you know, I, I you know I was a DVD producer uh, in the aughts, and I produced the two the X Men and X Two DVDs, and then Superman Returns. So I spent a lot of time on the sets of those movies. I was in Australia for a year. I was in Canada a lot on X Two and. I just remember, you know, stepping onto Stryker's base, you know, at Alkali Lake. Uh -huh. Those sets were huge. They were in this, in Vancouver, there's an old Sears warehouse that was converted into a soundstage. I remember stepping onto that, and I'm like, this is the X-Men. Like, to me, the X-Men were, well, how I love Star Trek, X-Men were my comic Star Trek. Like, I love the X-Men so much. And to stand around, and like, Brian and, and Guy Dice gave me a tour of the sets, and I'm like, this is, I can't believe it's real. Like I was, and then you know, meeting all the actors, it was, it, it didn't seem real to me. Right. And you know, I was there, and I'm wandering around, and I'm, you know, looking at the sets of the the, the Blackbird, and you know, I'm seeing Nightcrawler, and I'm just like, this is so surreal. I never thought in my life. I mean, if you told me in 2003 somebody would make an Avengers movie, I'd be like, yeah, pff, <laughs> Shaw, get out of here. Come on. Hey, if they, if they told me that there would be more than four seconds of Colossus in a movie, and now we had, like, Deadpool, where the, he's actually a character <laughs> walking around as Colossus, I wouldn't have believed it. It's just it. astonishing. And then, you know, for a year, I'm, I'm, I'm watching Kevin Spacey drive around in a golf cart, his kryptonite golf cart where he's carrying a, a stuffed Superman in the back, towing him along the ground, going, Superman must die with a megaphone. I'm like, what has the world come to? <laughs> what has it. the world come to? It was crazy. <laughs> Oh, I love that. But wonderful. Ashley, how about you? Um, I'm going to go a little bit beyond, I think, the allowed timeline, but I think the Marvel Netflix shows are some of the best television that we're getting at all, or however you want to quantify streaming. I think the first six episodes of Luke Cage are like as near perfect as you can I get. Agree. 
to adapting something like that at a street level. I also have like just mad love for Supergirl. Uh, the Sanvers storyline is one of my favorite <laughs> things that's happening right now. And it took two characters that I didn't care about at the beginning of the season and elevated them, which I think is something that they're really succeeding in when you have to take bigger characters like Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman and relegate them to television. I also want to give a special shout out to Green Lantern, the animated series, because I feel like nobody watched it and it's super good. You're talking about the 3D one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can find it on Netflix right now. Yeah. Better than the movie. Way better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know if it, people don't remember the 2011 movie, but nobody it doesn't matter because Ryan remembered. Reynolds is Deadpool now. Jason, how about you? <laughs> Um, I, I have to give the mad shout, the biggest shout out to Flash and Arrow yeah. for creating this, especially Arrow, for creating this insane universe that exists on TV. And like Amy talked about, it is bringing the comic books alive. Um, I know Robert is a big fan of the Dominators, just like I am. And literally a couple months ago, we just saw Invasion. I know, right? <laughs> we saw, I, it, it was good. So, like, here's the thing. <laughs> It doesn't, the Justice League movie in the fall doesn't even have to come out. We've already seen a Justice League movie. Right. The DC TV universe did it as the Invasion crossover, and it was fantastic, and it was amazing. It had so many moments in there where I was like, wow, this is literally a comic book come to life. And it's another one of those moments where you're just like, I can't believe that Green Arrow created like this <laughs> TV universe I, for DC. I still can't believe it. Yeah. yeah, no, it's really hard to believe. Green Arrow. Yeah. The man who built the DC universe. Yeah. There, yeah. There's a, there's a show Queen. starring the Atom on TV. Right. <laughs> we, we are truly in the bizarro timeline. That really is. Yeah, and it, I, I'm glad you mentioned that, that four-part crossover. Three, really, if you mm -hmm. want to get really? particular. Three, three, three and a half. Three, you know, three, really. And even though there were some parts that didn't work, like yeah. they're all on a spaceship, you're like, huh. It didn't matter because it was fun. And I think everybody who, who's working on all of the CW shows, are, they're just having a lot of fun. I think that comes through also with a lot of these other shows like Preacher, like Legion. All the people involved in these shows are kind of like the bonds are cut loose. They're like, just make it good. I think that's kind of, television has really freed a lot of creatives up and I'm really happy with what we're getting. How about you, 19? Uh, well, I'm excited for, I mean, all the Marvel movies that are coming out this year. We have Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Mm -hmm. Obviously, everybody's stoked about that one. Spider-Man Homecoming. Like, <laughs> yep. I just, that Peter, he, I think he's going to be the winner Peter Parker, you know. <laughs> it's like, amazing to see how you had Sony. And I like the original, like, Sam Raimi, the first two are really great. I love those a lot. But I never felt like that was really the Peter Parker I was looking for. Right. And this kid is, like, killing it for me. So I'm super stoked on him. And also... Uh, Ragnarok, Thor Ragnarok coming oh, out yeah. with um, like gold blooms in it, you know, and it's like what? And Jack then, like, Kirby and, explosion. And, and and like uh, what's his name? Taika Waititi is sure. fucking doing the best friend of Green Lantern. Oh my gosh, I'm so <laughs> excited um, to see like what he does because I really like him as a director. I loved his other movies. Uh, what, what we, we do, do in the, in the shadows. shadows. Yeah, like all that stuff. The so Hunt I'm of the really Wilder, Wilder Kids, or what's that weird? Hunt, yeah, Wilder, 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 Wilder people. Wilder people. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it up until it got to the car chase. But, you know, once before the car chase, absolutely loved it. Although I'm really, I am really excited to see the Justice League movie, to see why Ben Affleck, like, hates his life so much. You know? <laughs> like, I want to well, see why. You only have a few more months to wait. Um, I can't believe it's already coming out. You know what we don't have to wait for is we're going to watch the history of the Hot Toys, and not only the Hot Toys act action figure line, but the Mego figure line. Robert Meyer Burnett, a Hot Toy sweaty himself, has put together this amazing video. He beat me for staying up over the hours. I was like, oh, I can't believe I'm here till 11.30 exporting this video. I don't think this man has slept, and you're gonna see why. Roll it. What is up, my sweaties? R&B coming at you from deep inside industry studios in Castaic, California. Here's where I have my office and edit bay where I'm currently editing the indie comedy Tango Shalom. I have a lot of my collection of odds and ends here inside my edit bay to give me all kinds of inspiration when I'm working long hours. So I figured I'd show you around my office and try and explain to you all why exactly am I so obsessed with Hot Toys figures. It really all began when I was a little kid. My favorite toys in the world were six scale, 12 inch G.I. Joe action figures. They had real hair and later Kung Fu grip. This was the adventure team. They had the greatest accessories, the greatest vehicles. They were the greatest toys in the world. They even had a submarine that you could submerge in a bathtub or a swimming pool. They had an amazing headquarters and they had what I thought was the greatest vehicle of all time, the mobile support vehicle. But then some brain trust gave us this guy, Bullet Man, a faux superhero to join the adventure team. It was the first time as a kid 
I thought a toy was stupid. But then Mego came along, offering us the world's greatest superhero 8-inch action figures, and I forgot all about G.I. Joe's. But even as a kid, I'd get pissed off when toy companies did stupid things, like give me this kind of a Batmobile with a Batman sticker on the door? Really? Where was the Bat insignia? Why was it too small? Why couldn't it look like a real Batmobile? Why were they making a Hulk figure that was 8 inches like every other figure? Or making Iron Man's armor out of fabric? Or worse yet, the Human Torch's flames out of fabric? They gave us Tarzan, whose bare skin was made of fabric. And Mego didn't stop with superheroes, they got other licensed properties like Star Trek, Planet of the Apes. Heck, Mego even got the Wizard of Oz. If you wanted licensed figures, Mego was your company. But they kept doing stupid things, like the Star Trek aliens, the Gorn was dressed in a Klingon outfit, the Keeper, who looks like Baylock, kind of, I don't know. But they also made Shogun Warriors, and they made Micronauts, and for a long time, Mego was the coolest toy company on the planet Earth. Then in 1977, action figures changed forever with the release of Star Wars. Kenner Toys introduced the three and three quarter inch action figure line, and everybody in the universe bought Star Wars action Action figures including me and I love them but secretly I also hated them because none of them looked anything like what they were supposed to look like why couldn't the land speeder look like a land speeder why did Luke Skywalker look like this why were the lightsabers in two pieces why did the TIE fighter have to have small wings and why was I supposed to be excited about some spring-loaded feature where the wings would blow off the side of the TIE fighter to simulate an explosion I could do that in my own imagination but anyway I bought them all and everybody loved them and now over 30 years later never in my wildest child childhood imaginings could I have ever foreseen that action figures have been taken to a high art. And Hot Toys is the absolute pinnacle of this. It's exactly what I dreamt of when I was a child, feeling disappointed in almost every licensed toy I ever bought. This is my Hot Toys case in my office, the top shelf for the Avengers and other Marvel characters. I mean, look at the likenesses. I love assembling them together. There's even a little Guardians of the Galaxy flavor in there. Then of course we got two eras of Superman, two Jor-El's, we've got civilian Dark Knight characters and the Dark Knight himself. The third level, I've got Bat Villains. Two generations of those as well. Tim Burton Batman. I've got four different Wolverines. Fantastic. Then on the bottom level, I got sci-fi movies. I got Robocop and Ed 209. I got The Crow. I got Jeff Bridges from Tron Legacy. I got The Alien from Alien 3. I got a Predator. I got two Terminators. And I got Ripley. These are some of my favorite figures. The first Hot Toys figures I noticed in the aughts were the Predator and the Alien figures they did. The Predator figures have always been great, but these this is the re-release of the Celtic Predator. The first Predator figures they had to release as action figure kits. This is, of course, Jack Nicholson as the Joker. Look at the facial sculpt on this, it's amazing. Look at the clothing, it's just beautifully tailored. So much fun. Here's, of course, Jor-El and Superman. They only released Jor-El for Superman Returns and never in the United States. But this Christopher Reeve figure is amazing. I love keeping the two of them together. I like to believe they're supposed to be together. Uh, that head sculpt is an 11 years old. Uh, Hot Toys is as far surpassed that. Anthony Mackie's The Falcon is a favorite figure of mine. I mean, look at the detail on the costuming, the detail on the uh, on his wings. The engineering is just stunning on figures like this. And they have the new stand, so it can hold our characters aloft. This is, of course, Captain Harlock from Lee J. Matsumoto's uh, Galaxy Express 999 universe. I love this character. This is from the CG movie that was released a few years ago. Just a fantastic animation figure. Love it. And my favorite Hot Toys figure, uh, this is Rocket and Groot. Again, the engineering on this figure is amazing. The paint ops, everything about this figure is just stunning. These guys come together or separately. Just amazing figures. I love having them together. And this is, of course, my favorite Hot Toys figure of all time. The Don himself. Vito Corleone from The Godfather, what a face sculpt. He's my third Marlon Brando figure I have. I think what I love most about action figures is that the distillation of all the imagination that went into creating those characters in the first place. Their legacy of talented writers and artists and animators and visual effects technicians and actors and everyone who contributed to the legacy of those characters can be distilled down into one figurine. One figurine that goes on a desk. A figurine that can inspire you every time you wake up in the morning. That's kind of how I've always felt about action figures. And I guess that's why I've always loved them so much. That, and we finally live in a time where I can get a Batmobile that looks like the Batmobile. A Batmobile that's properly scaled, that fits the characters the way it's supposed to fit the characters. We live in wondrous times, my friends. Don't I always say that? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. 
What an amazing uh, historical look at all the action figures that are infest all of our homes right now. I'm sure you could look over away from your computer screen and see at least five or six action figures that you've played with. I think it's great. Thank you, Robert, for putting that together. Yeah, yeah. I, I, thank yeah. You, I, you know, yes. I have to say I'm a year behind. I mean, my, my action figures in my office are like... A, I haven't brought in the last year's worth of Hot Toys. Well, and you're still so, waiting for your Iron, what is it, the Super Hulkbuster the Iron Hulk Man? The Hulkbuster, where is that? I mean, I've still got half the Avengers bo un uh, boxed up at home. All right, let, let me go round table here. What is your favorite toy that you own right now, Amy? Ooh. Uh, it, this is going to be a different answer every time you ask me, but the one that springs to mind is that they made reproductions of, like, Secret Wars figures, so I have a little Mohawk Storm who came with a reprint of a Secret Wars issue. Ooh, nice. Uh -huh. Nice. Into it. I gotta say, I just got this amazing reproduction of the original The Batman, like this, the one where he just has the weird bat symbol and he's got the purple gloves and it, it's a statue where it's just the original looking strange, weird Bill Finger, Bob Kane version. So I just got that and that's kind of my favorite thing that I have right now. How about you, Robert, what's your favorite? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's really hard to say. I, I, I don't really know, but I have to say, I really love having a Hot Toys vision figure. I never thought I would ever see a Vision <laughs> figure, you know. And when it came out, it's so gorgeous. It comes with Molnir, you know. It's all good. So I'd say the Vision. I, it comes I wonder. With Mjolnir? I wonder what yes. John Campia's favorite yes, it does. toy is that he uh, might yes. possibly have. Well, it's tough to see him right now. This is this oh. is my favorite. Such a great. My favorite. absolute favorite one right now. This is uh, Jor-el from Man of Steel. What I love, uh, first of all, Russell Crowe is one of my favorite actors. And everybody knows Man of Steel is one of my all-time favorite comic book films. And so when I saw this one, and you can't really see the base over it because I can't tip. It's big. It's the big house of uh, L crest on the bottom. Such a great. So figure. I, this was the first hot toy I ever bought. Mm. I bought it a couple of years ago now, I guess. Right. And this one, I just this is my favorite toy. So as soon as you said, "What's your favorite toy?" I'm like, "I gotta go to my office He's and got get it." it. In his office, it's, it's a really. It's but it shows awesome. you, you can see yeah. why Look hot at the toys little are so creepy great. Skull. It's amazing. Yeah, he's holding he's the, got codex. the codex. <laughs> the codex before it got him absorbed into <laughs> Superman. Yeah. All right, Ashley, what's your favorite toy? Uh, so I collect Robin action figures, mostly Tim Drake, but some uh, Dick Grayson and Jason Todd have made their way into that collection as well. I have two um, plushies, and one is Tim Drake Robin, and one is Dick Grayson Nightwing, uh, made by Night Owl Workshop on Etsy, uh, that Jason bought for me, and they're my favorites. <laughs> well, we all know what we're getting Ashley for Christmas. There's yeah. <laughs> not enough Robin and Nightwing things. You, there's a lot that you can get her. How about you, Jason? Uh, mine is a tie. I have an old metal Enterprise D from the Playmates. Nice. Wow. That, that, that I dropped so much on, a, on the concrete sidewalk that one of the nacelles are kind of bent in, but I don't care. I still love it. And then the next one was uh, um, a late Christmas gift I got was a Kenner Superpower Superman uh, from the woman to my right. And if you squeeze his legs, he punches. Nice. <laughs> I got to say, I collect all things Dr. Doom, not just this T-shirt, but I have a little area in my office. I'll show you a snapshot next week. You have to wait till episode 101, but it's uh, Doom-filled. How about you, uh, 19? Uh, two things spring to mind. The most recent being a uh, Captain America Sum Sum. It's about this big. <laughs> he's like perfect for putting behind my head when I'm reading a book and stuff. Like he's great. I took him on an airplane. Like he's perfect size. Like nice. I really love him. And also, uh, I would have to say my favorite figurine, one of my, like, the first one that pops up is the Modoc Build-A-Figure. Yes. That's, like, <laughs> so ridiculous. And I bought it on eBay, and I love it so much. And it's, like, the best. And it, all his fingers are, like, because he's just a giant head with leg and yes. arms, they made all of his fingers articulated so you can, like, throw up all sorts of signs and stuff. Oh, yeah. You can pose them in all these fun ways. So he's pretty yeah. 19, I pretty also great. totally bought that Build-A-Figure <laughs> on eBay already assembled. Ha! Yeah, I, uh, ha! cheaters. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm a cheater. Screw Me it. Too. David? Uh... McCoog and I uh, on TV Talk were lucky enough to interview some of the uh, Voltron Legendary Defender uh, creators. You know, it's on the new Netflix oh, series. Yeah. So they, DreamWorks Animation people actually brought in like a 24-inch full Voltron that, that, that talks and everything. You know, you push a button, it speaks, and it lights up and says all these different funny, you know, sayings. So that's my favorite toy right now. I have it actually uh, on my bookshelf, and it's just, it's, it's incredible looking. Wow. It's huge. Right, take a picture of that and throw it on Twitter. 
I, oh, well. oh well. I might change my answer. To, uh, it, the one I've been dragging around with me the longest, like I lose everything. It's it's a problem. Like I just try to treasure things while I have them. <laughs> but the the one figure that's like I love that. made it across the country twice with me and through college and everywhere else I went is my little Dr. Beverly Crusher action figure. Oh, oh. That's amazing. Oh, yes. You know what? I'd like to ask every panelist, please take a picture of the toys that you talked about today and put it on tw on Twitter so we'll we do. can like yeah. do a recap next week. That'd be great. Let's move into our next segment, which is called the future. We're going to talk about the future of the superhero film, be it in movies, television series, uh, streaming. There are so many possibilities and so much amazing stuff. Like I said, it kind of kick-started off with, uh, you know, we already had Iron Man and Hulk and Captain America and Thor, and that created the Marvel Cinematic Universe with Avengers. And in the same, the following year, you had Man of Steel, which kind of kicked off the DC Cinematic Universe. At the same time, you had the TV series Arrow kicking off the, 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 the series uh, for DC uh, television, and at the same time you had Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. after Avengers came out. Coulson's not dead. He's you know running his own thing with the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. And I remember seeing a poster here in Hollywood, and I was like, I cannot believe I'm walking around on Sunset Boulevard. It was a goddamn billboard for Agents <laughs> of S.H.I.E.L.D. What world am I living in? That's a, All of us nerds have to constantly pinch ourselves. It doesn't even matter if this, the TV show or movie is even good or not. It's that we've got such a plethora of amazing content that's coming at us. that we. It's like if something sucks, it doesn't matter because there's four new things that are even better. And one person didn't hit the mark, three more did. So that's kind of what we're getting right now. And it's okay. It's, it's okay if some of these movies that come out aren't what we all expected or don't hit the mark that we want because everybody wants to make a good movie. Everyone's trying to make good films. So I'm open to every single film that's coming out and I want all of them to be good. Let's list off a couple. We got Guardians of the Ga Galaxy Volume 2. We've got Wonder Woman. We've got Spider-Man Homecoming. We've got Justice League. We've got Thor Ragnarok. That's just this year. We've got Preacher Season 2. We've got Legion going on. We've got The Walking Dead, like the one, an amazing zombie horror TV series based off a of comic book, what what pops off to you that you cannot wait to see either this year or, you know, let's talk about Nightwing because we're getting a movie now of Nightwing, which I'm super <laughs> excited about. I mean, let's so go excited. into the future. We can talk about whatever really we're excited about. Um, let's start off with you, Ashley. What, what are you excited about in the next year or so? Uh, all Nightwing all the time, definitely, for sure. Um, that's not a really exciting answer. So I'm really excited for Doctor Who to come back because nice. it's going to be the final season with Peter Capaldi. I know. So amazing, and we have a new companion. We finally got rid of Clara, so uh, I'm really <laughs> looking forward to Doctor Who uh, and then Wonder Woman. Like, you're never going to convince me that that's not going to be an amazing movie, so I'll, I'll Wonder Woman all the time. Definitely. Jason? I think for me, it has to be Defenders. Defenders, because uh, I'm a, such a massive Daredevil fan. Yeah. I, I really like what Charlie Cox does with the character. Uh, I haven't seen anything of Iron Fist yet, so that has not dampened my expectations at all. I really love Iron Fist as well. But, like, the idea to see what that Netflix universe, can, what their style of Avengers is going right. to be, I think could be very exciting. And I, and I think, is it next year or is it this year? I don't know. It's this year. It's this year. We'll see. It's yeah. going to come even sooner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm really excited. I mean, I've, I've been hearing, you know, some mixed media information about Iron Fist. I'm not watching any of the preview By episodes. By mixed, you mean bad? Yes. Because I've been hearing to, straight up I'm, bad I'm things about Iron Fist. I'm just trying to be cool Fist. about it because yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm, <laughs> I'm reserving my judgment. A lot of the people only saw the first six, so they haven't seen all 13. So I think if you're going to go, you got to go the whole all way and see all of them. And then if it's all a big, boring courtroom drama and we don't see any kung fu stuff, I'm going to be pissed off. But I don't know if that's going to be happening. But I love all the other series. Luke Cage, the two seasons of Daredevil. In fact, the second season of Daredevil did what I didn't expect it to be which was better than the first season. So I'm all in on that stuff. How about you, 19? Well, talk, speaking of the Netflix universe, uh, I just want to just throw this out there in the universe. Mm -hmm. So hopefully maybe this desire, this wish of mine will come true. But I would love to see a She-Hulk show on Netflix. Yeah. yeah. And I would love to see Moon Knight. I think that there's a place for them. I think they would totally fit with the world that they're building. And like, I'm an idea man, okay? Like, just, <laughs> like, just do it. Like, I'm just telling you, like, it could be so great. Yeah. Like, it's amazing. You're so. not going to get any arguments from Robert Meyer Burnett. <laughs> what do you think, Robert? Well, you know, I mean, obviously I want to see Justice League. It's a lifelong dream. But I have to say, and this is not exactly a controversial answer, Infinity War. Mm. Mm. Because to me, watching the Marvel Cinematic Universe develop has been something I never thought would work in the first place. I'm like, Iron Man, really? Right. You know, and then after the second Incredible Hulk movie, I'm like, eh. But to see what they've done, to see where they've gone, and the, the you know, I watched Doctor Strange again. It came out on Blu-ray. Right. And I, I just was struck by 
the marvelous thing that they've been able to do with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, marvelous, um, <laughs> and, and something that shouldn't have worked, that is working so well. There's Everyone's firing on all cylinders, and I just can't imagine what we're going to see. Yeah. How many characters? It's going to be like reading Crisis on Infinite Earths was back in 85. When I first started reading that, I'm like, I know it's DC. Right. But it was like seeing all those characters together. It was like the ultimate JSA, JLA team up that I loved so much when I was a kid. But to see it as a movie? In IMAX. I mean, it's going to be the return of the king yeah. of, of superhero movies. I mean, I can't even, I have such high hopes for this film. I wish it was like eight hours long. Well, you know what's uh, even stranger than that? I feel like I'm more excited about the fourth untitled Avengers movie than I am for about Infinity War. Because I feel like I kind of understand what they're going with with Infinity War. They're like, let's bring all these characters together for some cosmic thing. Thanos is going to be in it. Going to have a bunch of other characters introduced. You have 58 other characters. Spider Man's going to get a symbiotic, you know, outfit, and all kinds of crazy stuff is going to happen. So I feel like it's going to be a mixture of Secret Wars and a whole bunch of their kind of intergalactic comics. What's more in inspiring to me is like Thor Ragnarok. How did the Hulk get on Planet Hulk, which is basically they're taking Ragnarok, and they're taking the story of Surtur from Thor, and they're bringing that in with Planet Hulk and combining it. It's not going to be like either of those comic book series, but to me it's intriguing because the Illuminati from the comic books, they can't do that because of the, the rights issues. They don't own Reed Richards, but they do have Doctor Strange. They have Black Panther. They got Tony Stark. I'm thinking that those guys got together and banished the Hulk using Doctor Strange's magic. The Hulk is on planet hulk whatever you want to call the planet i don't know if it's going to be scar or whatever but i think the fourth avengers movie is going to be world war hulk i think the hulk is coming back and he's pissed and he wants revenge on those guys they don't well, need that, that you just excited me to no end I mean, that's come what i'm on. saying i'm thinking about them. with day go day glow colors too <laughs> the new day glow colors <laughs> that's right I the love green it. scar is here oh. you know who knows um did I get everyone who... There's so many people uh, uh, on yeah, the table. I get John. <laughs> John. Uh, I, oddly enough, I'm, i am got to admit I'm cooling on the Netflix series mm -hmm. a little bit because I thought, very unpopular opinion, I thought Jessica Jones was was pretty overrated. Uh, I thought the second half of Luke Cage was pretty was kind of weak. Even the first half of that series, was, the season was amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got a couple people in the office who have seen Iron Fist and were super excited about seeing Iron Fist and they're come back going... Oh, like they're just saying. So I, I, I'm not quite sure where am I. I. It's taken a lot of the wind out of my sails for Defenders, to be right. honest. I don't know how much I'm looking forward to Defenders at this point. But two things that I'm really looking forward to. Um, Infinity War is, I feel like I, I know what I'm going to get from Marvel at this point. So while I'm super excited for it, the two things I'm really looking forward to, because I think they're going to help kind of like Avengers did, like The Dark Knight did, like X-Men 2 did, I think these two films have the, the potential to kind of move the compass a little bit. One is, is Wonder Woman. I think what Patty Jenkins is, is doing with that film, just my, my, my apprehension about the casting in it, I think what she's going to do with that movie, I think the trailers have looked fantastic. I think that is going to help move the needle a bit. And then the other one, kind of in the same vein, but for different reasons, is Captain Marvel. Mm. To see what Brie Larson can do with that. We've never seen Marvel do a character like this. And I'm not talking about gender. I'm not talking about anything. Right. Like a character like Captain Marvel is a new kind of character for them and what they do with this. and like Because she's the type of character that will change the pattern of the MCU entirely, right. depending on how they use her. So those are two films right now that are on the radar that I'm really excited about. I like that you brought up Captain Marvel because I don't know how they're going to incorporate her, but I feel yeah, like they're like going to use... Yeah, how the hell do you do they're that? They're going to use the Nova Corps. They're going to have to use some of those cosmic elements that they've introduced with the Cree and those kinds of things and kind of emerge those with, with you know, Earth. So what do you feel about I, I'm, I'm desperately excited for, like, we've waited 75 years and we're finally getting a Wonder Woman movie. Yeah. Uh, I'm really excited for Captain Marvel and Black Panther and the way those are expanding uh, Marvel's, like, style of offerings and, and heroic palette. Uh, but I'm also, if we're looking to the future as a comic book fan, I'm very excited about, like, the, the pattern set by the success of Walking Dead that's now led to Preacher and Outcast. Uh, I think this is the road we go down to start exploring the rest of the amazing stuff that's in comics. Mm -hmm. So we can sort of move past the sort of like, what's a Scott Pilgrim? Like, right. dear, like, film right. that I love <laughs> that nobody understood. Uh, then, and, and get into like, now we're finally going to be ready to make Sandman. Totally. We're finally going to be ready for the indie greats of the 80s, 90s, and like the current crop of indie comics, which are unbelievable. Yeah. Like, that, that I think the future. That's what I'm calling out. You're calling it right. I think in five yeah. years, all those things that we're into right now as comic book heads, they're going to be like adapting those flawlessly. That's what it feels like. Did Some I, of them did will I, suck, but a I bunch of them will be good, I hope. David Griffin, 
I what are you looking forward with, to? Uh, what Amy was saying, I'm going to stick to the TV universe. We are going to get in those. Some of those shows are coming up now. We're getting scalped later yes, on this year, right. which is awesome. Finally, um, with a complete get, Native so, American cast. Exactly. So for those of you who've never you <laughs> know, yeah, seen white people. or read, obviously read Scalped, it's basically The Sopranos on a Native American reservation. It's gangster. I mean, it's it's so good. Jason Aaron. Oh, you Aaron's, said scalped. Yeah. Scalped. Yeah. I thought you said scout. I'm like, Timothy no, Truman? Scout. Scout. No, Remember scout. Scout. Right. Jason Aaron. Yeah, that's yeah. going to be good. They're also developing. They're trying to get done. I hope they will get it done. Is why the last man, Brian K. Vaughn. Right. I think that'd be They've incredible. They've been trying so to long us. to get Give that going. Yeah. So Do you I'd remember when um, uh, yeah, like every uh, five years, Transformers Boy? Like, oh, Dan Trachtenberg. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> uh, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. Remember Shia LaBeouf oh, was, right. attached was attached to White for like yeah. two yeah. years. He yeah. was attached to that. They were trying yeah. to get that. But now going. they're going to rock Why the Last Man the proper way, which is as a series. I don't like it. Yeah, it shouldn't be two It's got to be a series. I want to see seventy-five episodes of the Sandman done, just like every issue of the comic. I think peak TV and golden age of superhero film stuff are finally going to meet. I yeah. think like, I think that's the way to do it. In fact, Scalp, I'm just fresh on to that 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 storyline. I know they have like I think it's five hardcovers, and somebody yeah. had just recommended it to me. I was like, how did I miss this? Jason Aaron can do anything. He's a good yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited to start good. reading Scalp. There's never a time when you can't jump into something. It doesn't matter if it came out 20 years ago or if it came out yesterday. That's what's so great about the comic book medium. You can go to any one of your comic book stores and find these amazing nuggets of awesomeness, which I can't wait to get all these ups- these issues of Scalp and absorb them. Let's get into some absorption right now with Minor Mutations, where I'm just going to list off about, a, uh, I guess it's eight things and then we're going to talk about them let's rock into it x-men tv series yep it's called gifted number two we got the new wonder woman trailer it drops and gives you a little flavor of her origin uh number three we got zazzy beats is going to be playing domino in deadpool 2 number four we've got iron fist getting some negative reviews uh number five we've got isabel cornish is crystal of the inhumans on set in hawaii that's right she's got her yellow outfit that's right uh number six we've got matthew vaughn is he up to direct man of steel 2 that's what we're hearing right now he's probably going to make it a lot more like more supermanish uh number seven we've got preacher season two is on the road we've got some clips from that and number eight we've got thor ragnarok director taika watiti saying he's not making a comedy so a lot of people are kind of chiming in saying taika is like hey it looks especially from the entertainment weekly uh those pictures people are like why is it so colorful it's like first of all read a comic and then you <laughs> might shut the hell up and understand what jack kirby yes. is all about <laughs> You know, got to, you know, sorry, I know all the people watching this were like, we know who Kirby is. I know. But every once in a while, somebody's like, I don't like it. It looks goofy. It's like, well, relax. You haven't even seen the movie yet. (laughs) Yeah, it's called having some fun. So I think what Thor Ragnarok is going to be is awesome. I can't wait to see it. Um, what pops off to you, John? Let's start with you. Oh, the, obviously, the, the top one that comes out to me is the possibility of Matthew Vaughn directing a man of You're talking about the guy <laughs> who made R-rated comic book movies work before Deadpool. That's with right. Kick-Ass. You got uh, you got Secret Service that he did, of course. And he he kind of re envisioned X Men with X Men First Class. Mm-hmm. He directed Daredevil and Superman in reimagining the fantasy genre with Star uh, Stardust. Stardust. Which I think is this generation's Princess Bride. I think that movie is tragically underrated. So good. For him to bring his sensibilities to Man of Steel, which I already think is a brilliant movie, right. I think this is the most exciting thing on the radar right now. I hope it works out. I fully agree with you, and I like that Mark Millar and him actually did a soft pitch about Superman several years back before they did this new reboot with Man of Steel with David Goyer's script, and I feel like now they're going to return to that because yeah. they're what basically Matthew Vaughn's saying is like, I want to have a lighter and brighter Superman, which is what all of us want. We don't need. We know the world's so we know that there's like dark evil things but we need superman to actually stand for something so hopefully that's what's going to happen how about you amy uh, I'm I'm also very excited about the possibility of Matthew Vaughn. It's interesting because he's made some of his bones by projects that sort of like take the piss out of superheroes in a sense. But he also like he did First Class, which is one of my favorite sort of cinematic experiences of like the heart that I wanted. Mm-hmm. Even like there are, there are parts of the film that work better than others, but the ones that work are the ones I care about. Right. <laughs> so I really love that movie. Like, and they put them in the uniforms in that movie, which yeah. was a big moment for me as a film goer. Anyway, so that's sort of the the argument for Matthew Vaughn being able to do the straight ahead version as well as the tear it apart version um yeah i've liked a ton of his movies oh wonder woman trailer yeah how about <laughs> it? yeah that was so much fun oh i'm so excited y'all. yeah i was gonna say charles and uh and uh and eric their their relationship you know yeah. that was what the, really was the best part for me a really for strong class. relationship at the heart of that film yeah. and then like i'm i I'm still excited for Defenders, even if everybody turns out to be right about Iron Fist. I, you know what? Even if Iron Fist is a dud, it doesn't matter. Because, look, I'm looking at the overall game plan. 
Daredevil, both seasons are incredible. Charlie Stella, Cox can save us, people. Yeah, <laughs> Charlie Cox can save us. Check it. Electra's going to be in there. Punisher, come also, on. Like, don't be Stardust turning on. the John brought. Yeah, so, <laughs> exactly. I don't have any any doubt. It's that also, too, the beautiful be thing about TV if one season is off, they can completely change mm -hmm. it and redo it if they're open to right. changing it, and the second season can be just a whole new show. Yeah. You can it, do that in television. That's, they, that's thing. probably yeah. what they're going to do. They're going to do some kind of course correction from oh. the feedback that they're getting. What pops off, David, to you, like, out of this list? I, I just, people, you know, with the with the negative reviews that are coming out already, Fire and Fist, just like, you know, just, just, just be patient, wait for it to come out, you know? I know a lot of people get angry, you know, when they see that because they have a lot of excitement and they, they want it to be good. They want all these series to be fantastic. And, hey, maybe it isn't, you know, but if it is and you love it, like love it, like own it, you know, just uh, enjoy it. But, you know, of course, on TV Talk, we're going to talk about that. I can't wait to review that. Also, too, with John uh, Campia with Matthew Vaughn, that's, that's, that's my highest thing on there, too. I think Campia might be the only guy I know that loves Man of Steel as much as I do. Every time I talk to him, I say, I, I, hey, I, oh, you do? Really? Oh, yeah. I do, too. Why don't you relax, son? You're sitting at the table. You all love Man of Steel. What's up? Well, and Stardust. When I was talking to John one time, I said, every time I watch it, I feel like it gets better and better with every uh, it's true. viewing. You know, and it's, it's so good. That so does. See Matthew Batman v Superman does not. Um, no. I, I would also just want to encourage people that just because a critic doesn't like something, even if they're a critic you like, it doesn't mean that you're not going to like it. Like, none of us are the same people. Totally. So yeah. if Iron Fist is something that you're interested in, give it a shot. Right. Ashley. How about you? Um, the Matthew Vaughn thing pops off to me, but like not in a positive way because I don't like X Men First Class, mm -hmm. um, and I don't heresy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like Matthew or Michael Fassbender is like really hot in that, and that's pretty much where it peaks for me. Um, I don't want that same like, oh, this is super bright, and like, look at us, we're dancing on tables, and there's a fish tank, haha, -ha, sensibility in. In a, in, a, in a world that's been established as being more serious. Sure. Um, but, like, nothing, again, nothing's going to beat the Wonder Woman trailer. Like, there's a very high bar set because Wonder Brothers is trying to do a certain amount of course correction. And there's a lot of weight on this movie on top of the fact that it's their first female lead. And if it looks as incredible as it looks, and if Patty Jenkins can pull off a story with all the sincerity that she seems to be putting into it, it's just, like... It can't go wrong. I agree with you. I mean, I think, but I think Matthew Vaughn, in my own opinion, mm -hmm. will probably, they're not going to change the DC cinematic mm -hmm. universe, but they're going to add the flavor of Superman when he comes back from his death, and they're going to make him a little bit more like the character that we want. You don't all think want. he's coming back as like black suit, evil Superman guy? Nope. I don't think so. Well, he's probably going to have that mullet. black suit. Yeah, maybe he's going to. I've been transformed by Darkseid. I have no <laughs> idea. But, but uh, how about you, 19? I'm really stoked about Domino in <laughs> Deadpool 2. I'm so stoked. I love my mutants and I yeah. always thought she is such a badass and I think that the woman they cast, I saw a picture of her. Mm -hmm. She looks great. I'm all in. Let's do it. Domino, Deadpool 2. I'm excited. She was one of the reasons I liked Cable. Like in the comics, one of the reasons I like Cable was because of the dynamic between the two of them. Yep. Like she's yep. such a key figure and she's one of those really interesting figures that like a lot of comic book characters that comic book fans know the general public has also heard of. Domino is one of those rare characters that like all comic book fans know, but almost nobody who doesn't read comic books have ever heard of her, and I think they're <laughs> gonna be really pleasantly surprised. Definitely. Yeah. Jason? Uh, Matthew Vaughn on Superman is a big one. I, not, not in terms of the brightness, but I think the energy he'll bring to that movie. Um, Wonder Woman is, I, I have no doubt Patty Jenkins is gonna kill it. I wanna bring out one positive actually and a negative. I, I don't have any trust in the ABC Marvel television machine because Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has just never been an interesting show to me. Um, Agree. In Humans, <laughs> I don't know so much about Crystal's casting, but they cast an amazing Black Bolt. Anson, Anson Mounts. Anson Mounts, who uh, was the lead on Helen Wheels, is mm -hmm. an amazing actor, and I've seen some of the onset pictures. He's sort of in a leather yeah. uh, Black Bolt version. I'm gonna watch the pilot of that show simply for him because he's an amazing actor and I think he's gonna give an amazing performance as Black Bolt. For the rest of the show, I don't know. I mean, Look. she looks good. She looks like Crystal. And she's and got the hair, which is a nice mm -hmm. sign of commitment. And <laughs> she's got a giant lock jaw. Yeah. Look how big that dog is. is. Yeah, yeah. A teleporting dog. <laughs> Come on. Have you seen the picture, right, of the big green? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. want that in my house, just the giant blue dog, and I'll never tell people what it is. They just have to know. <laughs> this time next year, it'll be like, what's your favorite toy? And we'll all be like, yep. life-size lockjaw. Yes. Right. Yes, I just want I the blue that. foam <laughs> lockjaw if someone can make that for me and transport it to my house immediately. <laughs> it doesn't have to teleport. But yeah, I'm the most jacked up about the inhumans. Marvel licensing is missing out if they don't make that the world's best beanbag. They, oh. That, <laughs> oh my God, what a good idea. I'm just going to hang out on my giant lockjaw beanbag. See you in four weeks.
Uh, let's get right into some Twitter questions. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, my God. My God. <laughs> Sorry, it's such a big table. Robert Marburnett, what I was waiting for this question because, because the idea of Thor Ragnarok being yeah. comedy, what's wrong with that? I mean, what we do in the shadows is hilarious. Yes, it if, is. If you want to see a funny vampire movie, that's your movie. And first of all, looking at Jeff Goldblum as the grandmaster, oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> looking at all the colors, wow. one of the most hilarious slapstick, you know, Marx Brothers, Three Stooges moment has already happened between Thor and Hulk. And it yes. was in Avengers 1. Yeah. I mean, it was hilarious when Hulk just punches Punch. Thor. They've already set it up. Guardians of the Galaxy, not exactly a dour, dark. Right. It's hilarious. Everything about it's hilarious. I don't mind that they do a Bing Crosby, a Hope and Crosby road <laughs> picture, mm -hmm. which were funny. I mean, they're, they're exploring different genres. It makes sense to me that the movie can be funny. And why anybody would think that's wrong? If you look at the director, you look at Kevin Feige, you look at what they're trying to do, I think we're in for but something we're, special. We're just trying one. to reassure people who are worried there won't be stakes, right? That would be why you'd issue a statement but like But they're this. on planet, I mean, Scar, it's like you got Hulk fighting in a gladiatorial arena. Right. With That's Thor, so hilarious. Yeah, and Thor Hella and Loki are like, they've yeah. got a giant, like there's a demon with a giant sword. You got to relax. And right, I mean, Death Ragnarok is coming. It's, it's, it's just, you know, if it's a little fifth element for me, Great. Yeah, that's I'm good, all about yeah, that. I think the thing to keep thing. in mind, too, though, is that really, if you look at the MCU as it currently stands, there's really only two films that are legitimate comedies. I think one is Ant-Man and one is Guardians of the Galaxy. Those right. are comedies. The others are action-adventure films with their own unique twists that also have elements of comedy. He's not saying here we're not going to have comedy mm -hmm. in the film. Like, right. whether we, when you go back to that first Kenneth Branagh Thor movie, that's not a comedy, but there's good laughs in it. I fully expect that they're going to they're, they're going to have a good element of comedy in there, but it's not going to be a comedy like Ant-Man or Guardians was. No, but I, I do think that there's going to be a, a level of absurdity that they're going to have to acknowledge. When you put Thor and you put Hulk in a ring and they're going to fight one another, <laughs> that's kind of comedic. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's not exactly... It's going to be... They're going to make it funny. There, there's going to be an element of humor there. There always is. Look, even when Kong took down a skull crusher in the new yeah. Kong Skull <laughs> Island, there's an element of humor in that battle. Spoilers, Robert. Spo yeah. Some people haven't seen Skull Island. I'm sure, but I loved it. They're going to bring geeks. They don't even America. know what a skull crusher is yet. Yeah, so I don't know what a... Right. So what's he talking about, skull crushers? Anyway, see Kong Skull Island. It's a fun movie. Um, <laughs> and there's a whole bunch of monsters in it. So... Yep. Guess what? We're, now we're going to move on to Twitter <laughs> questions. The first one is Nikia Courtney asks, Happy 100th, do you think Fox Marvel will do an X-23 trilogy like they did with Wolverine? Thank you. Let's go to our own little murder girl for the first answer. <laughs> Amy, what do you think about X-23 now that you've seen Logan? I mean, you know I'd be first in line for that. She is probably a bit young to put that into production right now. And I want to say this as delicately as I can. Uh, the X-Men films are very dear to me. Uh, X2 is one of my favorite theatrical experiences ever. Uh, there are many, many things that I love about them. They haven't really yet shown a track record for taking a chance on the female characters uh, that they have in their stable, which I think is sort of uh, a missed opportunity that I hope they're going to be looking into because they own a bunch of the most fantastic female characters of all time. So in terms of the likelihood of them replacing the Wolverine franchise with a female-led movie. I would really like to see it, but I'm trying not to get my hopes up. Right on. How about I'm you, sorry Rob? if that's too dour. No, no, not at all. How about you, 19? Well, I'm in the same boat as Amy. Like, I, I mean, I would be down to see some X-23 madness going on, but I, I don't see Fox taking that chance or that risk. They don't, I don't see that. No, that's even with Deadpool, there. you don't see them being, trying to... Well, Deadpool helping to influence it but but still the x-men universe so i mean i hear that they're trying to do maybe a phoenix thing next and it's like that's a huge misstep and like and then you have logan which is another 50 years in the future but then now you have the x-men past so we're gonna go back in time you know it's like their timeline is all messed up it's kind of a mess it's right. also the difference between a franchise led by an adult white man and an 11 year old uh latina girl right. like that's, that's a huge difference in terms of both the kind of storytelling you can do, even though we saw her be quite violent, and what a studio is going to throw millions of dollars yeah. at. Right. Uh, I, look, I, look I, I think, number one, no, they're not going to do an X-23 trilogy, but it has nothing to do with her being Latina. It has nothing to do with her being female. It's going to have to do with this. She's a great side character. That, that look who was awesome, Daphne, was incredible in that movie, but she's incredible because she had a lead there uh, in, in Hugh Jackman who could carry the weight of the film and then allow 
X23, much like the Minions do or whatever, to take those side notes and fulfill them beautifully. I don't think... Hilariously, the Minions did get their own movie. And they did, and it <laughs> failed. <laughs> and it failed. Yeah. And it failed badly, which is, is, is a warning sign to all of us. I, I just don't think that with Daphne right now, 10 years, let's have another conversation. I don't think with Daphne right now you could build... Uh, a franchise on this young actress, let alone the character itself. In 10 years, maybe, but right now, I just don't think you can do it. Do you think she'll crop up in uh, the new Mutants movie that keeps swirling around? I, well, considering there's no such thing as real continuity in the sex men universe, <laughs> I mean, who knows? Well, you know what? It's, it's weird. That's a like, yes. Can we put the spoilers <laughs> thing up, Cody? All right. This is for people. We've already, all of us have seen Logan, so I just want to give you a moment. Uh, it's going to be about a minute of spoilers, so here we go. So the ending... We see a ton of new mutants, mm -hmm. and Logan yeah. uses specifically the word new mutants three times. I've seen the movie twice now, and I counted. I'm pretty sure it was three times, and <laughs> Charles even says new mutants. I was like, are they trying to tell me something here? Because <laughs> I keep hearing about this other Boone movie with actual, you know, the Bill Sienkiewicz new mutants, mm -hmm. Cannonball and, uh, and Magic. And, and all these James other McAvoy playing Xavier in that movie. Yes, so I'm really excited to see that version of new mutants, but at the same time, after seeing Logan, I would just be just as excited to see a movie that's set 10 years in the future after Logan, and we're dealing with these new mutants who've all Friggin moved Richter? on. Friggin' Richter? Hey, look, there's a- Nothing wrong with Richter, No, Come that's on. my point! Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm saying, yeah. I, think, I think that's a good move to, maybe they're not gonna, they're gonna have their new mutants and then call this X-23, or whatever they end up calling this, <clears throat> this other version, but I think that's a good chance to go ahead and, and move forward with it, maybe not using the same actress, but moving forward that I wouldn't mind. I'd love to see more chances being taken in the X universe. What about you, David? Yeah, I agree. I, I think, like, I, I agree. I don't think uh, she could do it on her own, but if you put her with a good ensemble, you know, that can solve everything, like with the New Mutants. I mean, Hugh Jackman wasn't anybody in 2000. You know, we didn't really know he who was he Oklahoma was. He was in Oklahoma and Beauty and the Beast. He was Oklahoma and Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> the guy can sing. He can dance. He's talented. I mean, right. you know, Broadway hire him, but, um, I mean, he wasn't anybody yet, so you can do something with a relatively unknown ensemble cast. I mean, you know, Game of Thrones, you can do this on television and in film, but it's just they, they need some more people with them. Kind of like, like John said, she's a side character, but she has other side characters surrounding her. You can have a, like, you know, just a kick ass group of people to watch. Right. I'm, I'm going to do my swordfish. I'm in. <laughs> yes, well. my, my swordfish. <laughs> I've just hacked something. You know, <laughs> you know, though, this movie is hugely successful. It's more, it's the. It's already the most successful standalone oh, yeah. Wolverine film. Who's to say you can't bring back any of the other X-Men? Mm -hmm. Whether it's because they're all alive still. We don't know who died right. in, uh, up on Grey Be very careful. Be very careful. Yeah. With well, yeah, yeah, well they, don't, careful. they don't say. I mean, it's not a spoiler. I mean, you, you, you hear this about this nebulous event, but you could still have the X-Men come back. And these new characters, I mean, maybe they're gathering a cadre of the last mutants that are left. I mean, this movie made a lot of money. Yeah. And she, she's actually Spanish. She's half Spanish and half English. Mm. Uh, she comes from a theatrical family. She's very well versed in the classics. She's a fantastic actress. I think that, you know, they're going to get another movie made. She's going to be 14, 15, 16. Who wouldn't want to see her come back as a teenager yeah. in another X-Men movie? Yeah. I mean, there's no reason why they can't bring back, you know, Cyclops. Sure. I don't want to see Halle Berry, though. I don't want to see Halle Berry. <laughs> Nobody I think does. Worse. Halle Berry's Nobody done does. with Storm. I mean, but I they show you. these old characters. They have a template get already. Get in there. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think they bring back a fourth Caliban to be her new mentor. Yes, <laughs> that's yes. what they do. More Caliban. Another Caliban. What about seven Calibans all in one movie? Seven <laughs> Calibans for seven brides. Then it's fine. Sugar Man. <laughs> Sugar, Sugar Man versus Caliban. Sugar Man was a genetic experiment that failed, but he's still alive. He's still out there. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see Sugar Man. Let's move on to our next question. Uh, Jesus Sabalas Jr. asks, Congrats on Collider Heroes 100. With Nightwing hopefully coming into the big screen, what big bad would you like to see in it? We are going to go to our uh, Nightwing specialist, Ashley. <laughs> it's funny because the Nightwing specialist is actually, Jason probably knows more than me, and I'm going to take his answer, and I'm going to say it should be Blockbuster because he is his biggest Not best. my answer. Oh, good. <laughs> right. uh, he's his biggest best rogue from the amazing Chuck Dixon series, and he's a character that hasn't been defined a lot outside of that, so if you want to reimagine him as like a naked guy with no genitalia in the Nightwing movie, that would totally work. Jason? <laughs> I, my answer for this would be, because everybody's going to see this movie, and the people that don't know who Nightwing is, how awesome he is, uh, one of the best comic book characters of all time, they're all going to be like, he's just a Robin. Why do I care about Robin? So you have to give them a reason to give a damn about Robin. And I actually think 
For me, the villain I would like to see, it's not the villain that they're going to do, though, is Lady Shiva. And if you know anything about Lady Shiva in the comic books, she's one of the people that trained Batman. She's supposed to be the greatest martial artist in the world. She's better than Batman. So you make this movie about him having to beat the person who taught Batman, thus proving he's better than Batman. But I worry what they're going to do, because they're going to get afraid that um, people don't know who Nightwing is, that they're going to throw in, like, Two-Face or, Mm. like, the Riddler. Right. Two-Face, though, is... Has had, has had a tangle with Nightwing Yeah, Two-Face does have a relationship with Nightwing that would be very interesting. We've already seen him on screen before, but the Riddler is one of these big Batman villains that we haven't seen in recent history. What about um, because they've got a lot of different Robins right now in the DC Cinematic Universe? They've already established one Robin's dead. We don't know which which Robin that was, but he was killed by Harley Quinn and the Joker. What about the Red Hood? I think that would be an amazing Ooh. choice and bring a lot of depth to the movie. Oh, I want them to make Under the Red Hood so bad. I, I would certainly hope that they do that and, and leave the Batman movie with you know more established, bigger mm. villains. Because Batman, really, literally him and Spider-Man have the best rogues gallery that I can imagine. They can go toe-to-toe. Anybody else? I, 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 think it's, I think it's pretty safe. I, I'm, I agree with Jason. I think it's pretty safe that, look, they're going to capitalize... In the DC Cinematic Universe on on Batman, and they're going to make uh, Nightwing's villain a Batman villain, like whether it's a Riddler or mm-hmm. whether it's a, a Black Mask or whether it's you know whatever. They're going to go that way because eventually, whoever they get to be Nightwing is going to be Batman in the Cinematic Universe at right. some point anyway. So I mean, I think they're probably going to stick in, in that uh, wheelhouse. Definitely. Yeah, you know, I would actually like to see an English patient-esque star-crossed romance, literally, with Nightwing and Starfire. <laughs> That's the kind of movie that yes. I want to see. But you know, I want to see, see Starfire coming out of the cave crying, holding a dead Nightwing. I no, mean, I, I just, you know, I always had a thing for redheads growing up, and Starfire was my jam. I mean, I was... Uh, you, know, yeah. she, you know she's descended yeah. from I wanted cats, to meet Starfire, right? you know. <laughs> I, 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 I still want to meet Starfire. Yeah, she's Princess so, Corridor. Visit us, Starfire. Yeah. Come to Collider Heroes. Starfire we is will great. Meet you. I got to meet George Perez. I should have had him draw Starfire, but he did. I draw. can't believe George Perez said happy hundredth to us. He was so cool. He's one of the nicest dudes in the world. He drew a bunch of drawings for everybody. It was great. He's amazing. If you ever get a chance at any convention you go to, George Perez is doing a lot of conventions right now. Go say hi to him. Meet him. Have him do your drawing. Costs like forty bucks. It's the best forty bucks you're going to spend. Anybody else want to chime in about Nightwing? I just want to say, I just think it'd be cool to see. I love the Grant Morrison storyline, you know, with Batman and Robin. So I know I'm thinking more like a sequel to Nightwing. Let's say it does well, I do a sequel. And of course, when he has to take over for Bruce for a while, and it's him and Damien uh, fighting crime together in Gotham. I I, that, that was a great story, especially when Grant Morrison was writing Damien. So I'd love mm-hmm. to see those two together. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you will. Uh, next question is Bradley Davis asks, What would your advice be to young filmmakers? Well, if you're five, I don't know how young you're talking about, but uh, <laughs> let's just pretend you're not in high school anymore and you're, you're like, I'm at a film school and I want to make films. I'm making short films. I'm making videos. How do I actually make real content? Or what is, what is real content? Uh, my advice would be, number one, just keep making stuff. I mean, especially if you're uh, 18 or you're 38, it doesn't matter how old you are. If you want to make something, you have a creative idea, you have a vision that you want to have and explore, whether it's animated, whether it's a comic book or a film, like you're saying, I would start out by making short films and try to tap into whatever is in your environment. Say you're in North Carolina, go to a, a theatrical, uh, you know, some place where there's theater, put up a little flyer saying, I'm looking for actors and actresses, have auditions. There's nothing wrong with like being professional about stuff. Don't just say, hey, I need to ask your friend who's never acted in anything before. Try to get people who actually want to act. Then you can find all these other people who want to fulfill some of those other job aspects. An editor, a cinematographer, all these kinds. There's wardrobe people who are like, I can't wait to make costumes for somebody in the 80s. Find those people, they're everywhere. So it doesn't matter where you are, you can have a whole team of people wanting to try to help you see your vision come through. So that's what I would do is like, be proactive about making whatever you're trying to make and make it, don't talk about it. That's the biggest thing. other thing. You can talk about ideas till you die and guess what happens? You're dead, you never got to make the idea. You might as well try to make it, even if it sucks, it doesn't matter. Throw it on YouTube, a bunch of people, trolls will be like, that sucked. Make something else, tell them to suck it. That's all I can say, you gotta keep making things. It doesn't matter how many things you make. I've made so many things that suck that it doesn't matter because <laughs> they've been beaten by the things that I've made that are awesome. So that's what I mean. Eventually the things you make are gonna outweigh all the garbage that you made and be like, you look at your past like, ho, ho, whoo, that one sucked, but that one I'm proud of. So that's all I could say. Who else wants to chime in, Robert? Well, you know, I, I think 
the, the, one of the most important things is also kind of to follow up on what you said, find great collaborators. Mm. Find collaborators that, that, and also make the work that you're doing the primary goal. I've always believed that the work is the locomotive that'll carry your caboose down the train tracks. That's what I've always told people when I lecture. <laughs> and so many people, like, they want to they wanna put their name on the IMDb, and they all want to... No, no, Which no. you can do if you just pay for the account. You can get <laughs> on IMDb. Well, you can, but it's like no one is going to stop. There is no gatekeeper to IMDb. Save well, $120 you made, you a year. You made something that I quite love, which was red, uh, the I was say the Red Shoe Diaries. <laughs> well, you you did the Red Shoe Diaries? No, no, but, but I, and, and you, there you is know, an episode called great, The Naked it was Time. Great work that you you made a, a great, a really great, really clever. Thank you. He made it. Thank you. You guys did a great, uh, a great job. We did together. We did together. And I think that the key is to actually make it. Don't talk about. It, but find great collaborators that are like-minded, that believe in the things that you believe in, and go make things and mm -hmm. keep making them. And don't, like you said, don't stop and don't let anyone tell you no. The world is full of no's. That's very and true. I mean, everyone sitting at this table has made something. John's made a feature film. Amy's doing Future Girl and a bunch of other shows. We've got 19 doing our own shows. These guys made their things. They got a comic book that they, both Jason and Ashley just funded a successful Kickstarter for their Jupiter Jet can't wait to see that very excited about it so everyone's doing stuff how are they doing it why are they doing because they're being proactive about what they want to see happen they're taking the reins themselves and making what make them makes them happy and they're doing it Amy, and this uh, i also like if you are lucky enough to find people that you vibe with doing the kinds of things you're into like that's a, that's a blessing if not move um, like find your people. I did. Like, I moved. Yeah, I, I did. But like getting into, I've now been doing stuff online for a couple of years and 19, you were a huge part of that. Yeah. And Jason, you had me on your channel like real early. Like, and y'all have been, it's been amazing to watch everybody do more stuff. Like you have your heroes for sure. Like one of my heroes was Felicia Day and I get to work for her now and that's amazing. Yay. But also have the people who are coming up with you uh, that like you can all lift each other and it's it's real nice y'all and, and I would encourage people when somebody comes and tells you that you suck because they will uh, You can mostly ignore them because they're not making content So worry about the people that want to lift you up and want to work with you or want to encourage you because yeah They'll be your heroes and then they'll be your collaborators and that's really fucking cool Definitely. The small thing I want to bring up is I think at any level no matter what you are producer director editor Whatever you want to do even if you're by yourself the best thing to learn is story Learn yeah. story. Story drives everything from the lighting to the editing to even the producing to uh, deciding what color costume that character wears. It all starts in story. And if you're always like, well, I'm never going to be as good as a Matthew Vaughn, a J.J. Abrams, uh, um, any, any of these, Shane Black, any of these famous filmmaker writers or, or prose writers, um, don't be afraid to dissect their stories. Because uh, one of the best quotes I ever heard, uh, um, the, the man who wrote Fight Club, is it Chuck Palahniuk? Chuck yep. Palahniuk. He said that the only reason he wrote Fight Club was that he was trying to write The Great Gatsby, and that's what he came up with. <laughs> so don't be afraid that I sect yeah. your favorite books and your favorite movies, because by doing that, you'll figure out story. And, and don't, be afraid, don't be afraid to suck. Every, look, whatever you do, the first couple things you're going to do are going to suck. Just accept that. But the great Hollywood, I, I mentioned this on Movie Talk the other day, the great Hollywood film instructor, his name's Dove S.S. Simmons, and he made a, this great comment once, and it's true. It's, don't wait. He goes, how do you make a movie? This is how you make a movie. Get a camera, put one or more of your friends in front of it, say action, 90 minutes later say cut, and you have a movie. <laughs> I, like, I mean, really, get started. Like, just there's going to what you were saying, uh, Schnepp, is like, just get started. You're not gonna get better. There's not gonna be a better time to start. Just start, go grab a camera, tell Experience a story, Experience is go. the best teacher. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you know, absolutely. It really yeah. is. And kinda wish it weren't, hate being bad at things, but it's completely, <laughs> it's, 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 well that's the artist struggle. People think, you know, oh, artist lives, they have so much fun, whatever, but it's like, you gotta go through so much garbage. You have to make so much garbage until you start making good stuff, and that's the struggle, you know, and a lot of people can't do that struggle. They cannot, they'll lose hope and they'll give up on themselves, but you have to keep going. And building on what you're saying, like about story, yes, story is hugely important. And another thing I want to, another layer on top of that layer is write or make something about something that has a real feeling, like a f that something that you feel, not something that you, you know, oh, Spider-Man does this, whatever. You're not Spider-Man. Like, what, what resonates with you? What's inside your heart? What's inside your soul? 
put that, like whatever that struggle is, you know, funnel that into your creativity and in a way that'll help you with your struggle, you know, and you can kind of figure it out while you figure out your art. So it becomes really metaphysical and weird. It's Grant Morrison business. Yeah. Reality's well, plastic. And, and hopefully at, at 100 episodes now, yeah. we, we, I think we're getting close. We are. To being good. <laughs> we are getting, at we're, getting, we're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. Yeah. We, we started out like this. I don't know what I'm doing. And now we're like, I kind of know what I'm sort of doing. So the last thing I want to add to what uh, 19 was saying is also collaboration is very key. And remember, you, you're making a film. It's not just you. You have to collaborate. You no have man to be is an island. open to, and receptive to other people's ideas. You're not, you know, the, the end all be all. Even if, you're, if it's your idea, you wrote it, you're going to direct it, you're going to produce it. You have to be able to work with other people and be accepting of their input and output. So I think collaborating with people, it's like you're only as strong as all the people around you. And that's what filmmaking is all about. That's what media is all about. All of us here are only as strong as we are with our friends and all the people like you. Everybody, we're all, it's like a team effort, even making a YouTube show. So uh, that's a, that's it for the, that question. Let's move on <laughs> to Rudy Morales. Has uh, Do the reviews of Iron Fist make you nervous for Defenders? Well, Rudy, <laughs> kind of covered that, but I'm going to say no. Uh, let's round table it really quickly. I'm not nervous about the Defenders. Why? Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Daredevil Season 2, Luke Cage. What's up, yo? That's Four seasons. Who cares about the fifth weird? Yeah, maybe that one didn't work. Whatever. What are you thinking? Well, I, 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 I'm still hoping I'll like Iron Fist, but it's different people making the Defenders, right? Yes. It's, it's the showrunner of Daredevil season two. Yeah, it's, it's a different team. So uh, whether or not Iron Fist is good, read Immortal Iron Fist by Ed Brubaker, Matt Fraction, and David Aha, and then tune into the Defenders. Oh, and yeah. read Power Man and Iron Fist out right now because it's really funny. Nice. nice. <laughs> yes. How about you, John? Uh, yes, nervous, <laughs> but but lost hope? No, no. But yeah, I admit nervous. I, I would rather go in strong. I wish we were heading into Defenders after Daredevil season two. I'd rather right. go in off a high than the last couple of things that for me have been a little bit questionable. So nervous is a fair word to use, but I'm still quite hopeful. Robert? Look, nervous is something you save for a great date you're having and hoping to kiss a girl at the end of the night. That's what you should be nervous about. Don't be nervous about a TV yes, show. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, yes, really. Yes. I mean, come on. The show's going to come. It's going to be good. It's going to be bad. It really doesn't matter. Can I be nervous about both? Scheme of things. <laughs> no, you can't be nervous about both. <laughs> There's other things to be nervous best. about. They're in the real world. <laughs> I'm telling you, in the real world, get nervous. I love it. Well, Jason, let's go over to you because I'm glad that you uh, corrected because I, I now have zero nervousness. If it's the same mm -hmm. people behind Daredevil Season 2, one of the probably my favorite seasons of any of these Netflix series. Come on, Electra and Punisher done so no, well. Iron Fist is not the same showrunner. No, no, it's I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's okay. what I'm saying. But Defenders, I, yeah. Iron Fist, it's that's just like an afterthought at this time. I'm going to watch it. I hopefully I like it. <laughs> but I'm like all in on Defenders. So what, what are you guys saying? I'm a, I'm a huge Iron Fist fan. So like, uh, and I'm a disciple of Kun Lun. So it, all this show has to do is show me a lot of kung fu fights, and he's got to just like iron fist some people right in the chest, and I'll call it a win. Mm. I am a little worried about it, but you know what? I'm gonna reserve judgment until I watch all 13 episodes. Yeah, I've, I don't know hardly anything about Iron Fist, so I have like no stakes in the show. <laughs> same, I just hope same. it's amazing. It's like the same thing about Defenders and. Uh, the Power Rangers movie that's coming out, like just because I don't know anything about it doesn't mean I don't want it to be good. And again, just because some critics don't like it doesn't mean that I'm not going to like it and you're not going to like it. So like, give it a chance. How about you, 19? Um, you know, I'm not a big, same, I'm not a huge like Iron Fist person. I haven't read a bunch of stuff with him in it. And so I don't really have a pony in this race. Like, if it's good, it's great. If it's not, okay, like I'm, I'm fine with it. Uh, but that doesn't, again, the, you look at the showrunner, and if the mm. showrunner from the good, you know, good the seasons, good season. and, okay, <laughs> yes, then I'm in for Defenders. I'm not worried about Defenders, because it's two different ball games we're talking about here. Definitely. David? I'm excited to see uh, Madame Gao in Iron Fist, because she left at the end of Daredevil season one, and he said, where are you going? You're going back to China? She's like, no, I'm going somewhere much further away mm. than that, you know? So I want to know what she's been up to. She was a fascinating character. Remember, like, when Daredevil, like, went up to her, and he, she just, like, went like this, and he just flew back, you know, 15 feet. So I want to see what she's up to, and I think Defenders is going to be awesome, too. I'm excited about Iron Fist. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah like, I'm with everybody here. I'm going to watch all 13. I, you mm -hmm. know, who knows? Netflix has had some issues with their, like, you know, they have 13 episodes, and you're like, man, it would have just been amazing if it was eight. I know. Yeah. I know. That's or, why or always 10. my biggest Defenders, like, eight to ten is only eight episodes. Spot. Yeah. Right. So yeah. the Defenders I think they might, have, they might have learned. They're yeah, learning. Yeah. They're like, we spent they're a lot learning. of money on these four people. Right. Right. Yeah, there's episodes. always that one episode where you're like, why are they in that room the entire time talking? <laughs> yeah, about yeah. 100% right. agree. Stephen Braithwaite asks, congratulations to all of you on the 100 episodes. Do you remember your first comic book series that made you sweaty? 
a comic or series that made you sweaty. Well, we talked a little bit about that earlier. I remember sweating it out, black and white, Batman, loving the Joker and the Penguin and the Riddler and all those crazy uh, characters, egghead characters who aren't even in the comics, and then slowly got into the comics and was like, you know, this was like a late 70s, early 80s. How about you? Uh, the first comic series I ever tracked on the back issues of was Generation X. Nice. Uh, it, it partly holds up, uh, but I still love it. And it, like, it gave birth to like, a lifetime of, yep. of tracking things down. First tracking for me was Fantastic Four because I was getting World's Greatest Comics, which were reprints of the Stan Lee, Jack Kirby comics. And then once I got a little older, I realized, wait a minute, these aren't the originals. Where are the originals? <laughs> and then, you know, a back, back issue bin before there were even comic book stores. There were like paperback traders where their comics were just discarded in the corner. They're like, there you go, kid. You'd have to thumb through them. How about you, Robert? Well, you know, I, I was a comic book fan when I was a kid, but then I lost touch until about the early 80s, and I was on my paper route. And a kid was reading Camelot 3000, number Aww. four. And, you know, it was Brian Bolin Art, and Mike Barr wrote it, and it was about King Arthur coming back in the year 3000. Yeah. And uh, I read that, and then I got, it got me back into a comic book store, and I found Moon Knight, and then I found American Flag. Oh, yeah. And those Ooh. three books Ooh. got me back into reading comic books, and I was hooked. Then I had a 20-issue-a-week a habit. I was taking the bus, you know. Rough. It was rough. It was Remember rough Nexus? I, you know, I had to deliver had more shape. papers. First, first <laughs> comics, they had Nexus, Badger, American Flag. I was like, what are you trying they to were do all to me? Buck 50. I know. You know, they were buck fifty, and, and, and people now are like, what's a paper? I had route? to sell drugs to keep my comic book habit going. Oh, I saw <laughs> bootleg movies on videotape. Um, I read I read a lot of DC stuff, but I, when I became a, when I was a teenager later in my later teenage years, for the first time ever, I started picking up some X-Men comics. And it was right around the time that Legion in the X-Men, had decided, I want to make my daddy proud, so I'm going to make my daddy, Professor X, proud. I'm going to go back in time and kill Magneto, who's given him <laughs> all these problems, and that is the event that triggered the Age of Apocalypse, which mm -hmm. is still to this day mm -hmm. my all-time single storyline. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid kids. Did, did I mean, not work out. But, all, uh, still my all-time favorite single comic book storyline. Nice. How about you, Ashley? The first comic that I bought with my own money that came out of my father's pocket about four seconds before that was <laughs> an issue of the New Teen Titans number 39. It was a quarter. It's the white cover, and it's uh, Dick and Roy, and they've just quit. Yep, they're their giving it up. Identities. They're walking away. Yeah. What a it's, great cover, too. I think the oh, issue right before it. that was Nightwing's <laughs> origin, right? Or it, is that it, the way? It's the first time you see the costume. It's the yeah. costume re is revealed at the end, like in a box. Yep. And then he puts it on later on. And then they ape that with Tim Drake later. But yeah, New Teen Titans, they just put out an omnibus. Go pick it up. Jason. See, I bought a lot of comic books before the one I would call that made me sweaty. And the one that made me sweaty was uh, Nightwing's first solo series written by Chuck Dixon, drawn by Scott McDaniel, because that was the series that I needed to know what was going to happen every month. And the area that I, the, the really uh, small town area I lived in, Kansas, um, there weren't comic book stores. So I was picking my, my comics up at Walmart and gas stations. So I would show up, I'd get Nightwing 3. Next time I came there, it'd be like Nightwing 8. I'd be like, well, what? God, yeah. But what happened? You know, and so like I would try to hunt these down, and it's funny I never really got the complete run or most of them until like very recently. But it was Nightwing, um, the idea that like there was this character that Batman had trained for the last twenty years, and that he was going off on his own was such an an amazing and exciting idea to me. David, again, I got my start late, but uh, it's probably five six years ago. It was a book called Day Tripper. Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like yes. if that book doesn't make you cry, like it's by Fabio Moon and Gabriel Ba. I believe they're Brazilian brothers. I think they're yep. brothers, but they're just fantastic artists, incredible writers, and it's just—it's basically like if you can imagine every day of your life, and let's say every significant moment in your life. So let's say it's the first time you meet, you know, the woman you're going to marry, or you're a kid and you fly a kite for the first time. Imagine after each moment, that's the day you die. That's what the series is about. It's about all these significant moments in your life, and like, what if that was your last day on Earth? And it's just one of the most powerful books anywhere, novelization or you know, in graphic novel form that I've ever read. And it's, it's incredible. Read Day Tripper if you ever get a chance. It's, so it's a challenge to filmmakers. I don't know if any of y'all are good enough to make the Day Tripper movie or series. <laughs> Prove Damn, me wrong. That would be rough. <laughs> challenge shall be accepted by someone. How about you, Nineteen? <laughs> Um, well, as, as, as I said earlier, uh, the X-Men cartoon series is what got me into a comic book shop, uh, and I was there to buy the X-Men cards. I was a card <laughs> collector, oh, yeah. uh, and I do have all... I, re I went back, and I was at a convention. I just bought, like, a whole set, and I was just like, I just want... The 1994 Flare Ultras, baby. Right? I mean, you just like you like. I'll just I'll pick up one of these these cards, and it's not even a card. It's just a card, and it's like I'll instantly be transported back to where I was because I would just stare at these little images of these like amazing characters and like read their little bios on the back and keep them 
around with me, you know, and there's certain illustrations that just are really burned into my brain. Totally. Um, so there's that. And then uh, I think I started my image comic that I got a little sweaty over when I was a teen girl. I have a lot of fond memories of Gen 13. I oh, love yeah. Gen yeah. 13. Oh, I, I wanted to be Roxy Freefall like so bad. And then uh, Magical Drama Queen Roxy, Grunge the Movie with uh, Adam Warren, yeah. which is just like amazing. Like that just, because then that got into my anime thing. Totally. I also had that anime, sweaty anime thing. Now, where I was like really into is like Utena, out some deep you know, cuts and stuff right like now. that. Like I was all about, like that also is a big trigger. That I love that you mentioned the Adam Warren uh, little uh, grunge. Uh, oh, I love Adam I Warren. loved that. We, yeah. we had like the same child, except I would have been terrified to talk to you. That's kind of <laughs> I was such a dork. Like everyone hated me. Like it, it was not, I was not cool back then it was not it was not no. ladies you were totally cool if you were into comics <laughs> you're super cool never say that not in 1996 um, yeah <laughs> and in alabama no <laughs> it's not a thing i don't believe him for a second don't listen to these ladies you're crazy <laughs> all right next question jake silva asks what do you think about a doom patrol movie by dc sounds cool to me well jake it sounds goddamn cool to me too I know they've mentioned they've DC just announced like forty eight movies that are coming out in the next five years. <laughs> I don't know which which ones are actually going to happen, but I'm down with all of the ones they announced. I'm like, make all of them, please. I'll see all of them. And if they made a Doom Patrol, if they got announced tomorrow, who would actually be directing or writing the Doom Patrol? I don't even care because I love the Doom Patrol. I think that was Grant Morrison's like breakthrough into comic book writing, and it was so much fun. He took a, a bunch of weirdos and made you care about all these characters. Way before The Invisibles was the Doom Patrol. Check out his run. That's what made me really like the Doom Patrol. What do you, what do you think, Amy? I, I want the, the Legion treatment for Doom Patrol. Yes. I want some kind of like TV auteur to be like, that's my dream, let's mm. make it. Mm. Let's make it weird, just as weird as possible. And yeah. have to and make it weird. Put it on cable, and like I think it can work. Love that idea. It's got to be weird. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's not like, oh, it's just DC's X-Men. It's not. It's weird as hell. It's got Robot Man, a dude with a, a robot body with a brain. I mean, everything about it is weird. Robert, Doom Patrol movie. Oh, bring it on. I mean, I agree with you. I, the first thing that came to mind was Legion. I can't believe Legion is even on TV. <laughs> right. You know, I, I'm watching this, and, you know, I, I watch it at night when I'm about to go to sleep, and I have insane dreams afterwards. Yeah. I mean, the show is, it's crazy. I don't know how they pitched that and got it on TV. And it gets weirder every episode. It gets so weird. Dude, I watched four episodes in a row because I had been so backed up. I saw the, the pilot, like, you know, the first episode five weeks ago, and then I just literally watched four. That's, that's like, it doesn't get better than that when you're like, ah, Saturday. <laughs> I can watch four episodes of this crazy mind fuck. But Doom Patrol needs to be a show that I think is on cable. Whether Showtime yeah. does it or HBO does it or a, a channel like FX, it has to be. But again... It's special effects intensive. It's not mm. a cheap show to make. So you need an HBO to get behind it. Or a Netflix. 19, what do you think? Doom Patrol. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm down for Doom Control if it's weird. Like, Amy, Amy has amazing taste. We agree on a lot of things. And, uh, yeah, if it's weird, I'm in. I don't think that that'll happen, though. I doubt. I would be shocked if that ever got made. Jason? So. Uh, yeah, not as a movie. Put it on AMC, HBO. Give it to Charlie Brooker and the and the Black uh, Black oh, Mirror guys. Love oh. that. Yeah, yeah. Oh. That'd be crazy. Yep. Soul, <laughs> man right. over there. John, uh, I don't I don't think this is going to happen. However, right now there are 321 upcoming movies announced by DC. And we'll, who knows <laughs> how many of them will actually ever come to fruition? New ones are being announced every week. Certainly possible, but I, I'm with 19. I I have my doubts. Anybody else? Doom Patrol going once. I just would like to see it as long as there's Beast Boy in it, and he's played by uh, what's Jay Bertal. The guy who's dating Allison Pill right now. Nice. That's who I want to lead that show. That's a good call for Thank Beast Boy. Um, Beast Man. Hey, we are at the sweaty question of the week, and it comes from Steve Stark. He says, it's a very late incoming uh, email, so I picked it last. I know it's late, but for the 100th episode, what powers and what's your name if you became a hero tomorrow? So I don't know if anybody got a chance to think about this. <laughs> 19's got her hand up. What is it? Okay. Well, see, this is not fair because I, I collaborated like with a college boyfriend and we all came up with these analogs of ourselves. So I'm just going to use the analog that I created from my college days, which was a character named Death Wish, right? <laughs> Love After it. Those movies, yes. Love it's, it. You know, whatever. But her uh, powers are momentum-based. So she gets stronger the more crap you throw at her. So, like, she has to take a few hits to kind of get started. But once, like, the, the heavier the hits get, the stronger she gets. And I feel like that really resonates with. I love that. Life. That's a great superpower. Who was the as X well. Factor? There was an X Factor character, wasn't there? That would have you would hit him, and he absorbed the kinetic energy, and then he could turn that back on you. Bishop does that. Bishop does. Yeah, yeah. yeah Bishop. Oh, armor, he can turn that. Armor does that as well, but she's a much later edition. Oh, okay. Yeah. How about you, Amy? 
Shoot, I don't know. Like I, you're Sailor I, Mercury. That's what you are. <laughs> I mean, but the bubbles are like I love everything about her except her attacks. <laughs> right? Yeah. Bubbles. Yeah. Take They're very these. card captor ass. Yeah. They don't but, belong yeah. in Sailor Moon. I would have the like dumb little visor in the laptop. Oh my god, but, you're uh, so uh, adorable. Uh, yeah, I, I think of you as Sailor Mercury. Like <laughs> in my head, that's who you are. Thank you. Uh, I, that she was she was an, an influence. I chopped all my hair off and was a science nerd, and I was in junior high. And that show came on, and her name was Amy, and I was like, "Destiny has I shown know, upon me." I know, I feel um, it. I feel it. you didn't even tell me that story. I already knew it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I would probably go my 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 cheater answer, which is I would just take Doug Ramsey and then get. I would not help save the world because I'd be distracted reading everything in the universe. Nice. Um, so I don't know what my name would be though. Probably Codex or something like that. All right, I'm gonna go Bless with a, a clown sorcerer named Jimula. <laughs> That's who I would be. Yes, that seems um, correct. I would be able to go through it. different dimensions, all the different Earths, and uh, either make people laugh or help them. So that would be my power. Be like, if somebody's bummed out, I would show up like, what's up, motherfucker? And let's go on a journey, <laughs> son. You're Isn't like that what you do every day? Gandalf. I do that already, but <laughs> I would just show up would, every day. Yeah, I would just be like wearing like some kind of Doctor Strange cloak that could talk to me. And I'd also have clown nice. face yes. makeup. <laughs> part nightmare, part fun. Jimmy Locks. Check it out. John. Uh, well, my power, if I could pick one superpower voice that's when I was a kid, it would be flight. I would love to be mm. able to fly. I can't come up with a name, though, because I suck at names. Here's an example. My very first Dungeons & Dragons character was a wizard. He mostly casted lightning spells, and I named him Zap. <laughs> I really did. That was that's my dungeon. That's direct approach. Yeah. I, I, I'm terrible at names. Captain like Canada. Canada. Captain, sure. <laughs> Captain Canada, I fly. Captain Canada sues you. Yeah. Uh, David. Okay, so... I'm gonna have a few superpowers, but it's all from one from source. So I would I'll be called the Black Disciple. Maybe that. Give me a nice like robe or something like that. You look like a Jedi robe. And then I want the powers of the Avatar. I want the powers Ooh. over fire, earth, Ooh. air, and water. You nice. know, and have all those powers. Nice. So I'd be like the Avatar, like you know, the last airbender and all that. So yeah. I love that. You know what? You just reminded me of one of my favorite independent comics done by two brothers, not the Hernandez brothers, the Luna brothers. Check out the sword. Yes. Ooh. That's all about that, and you got to just check it out, Robert. I'm going to be Fortnite. <laughs> oh, Fortnite. I like that name. That's my Fortnite. Uh, what my power is is I have the ability <laughs> to find anyone from any walk of life and inspire them. And in a fortnight, they will change their life. They will realize their dream. Whatever it is they need to have happen in their lives, whatever emanates from me, causes them to within a fortnight. That's change awesome. their I, lot in life. I just started thinking of that Total Recall scene. Two weeks, two weeks, <laughs> right. two weeks. Fortnite. You know what That's I mean? Me. Fortnite. I'm yeah. no, uh, you know, I want to walk the earth, kind of like Kane and Kung Fu. Isn't that what uh, Sam Jackson oh, said? I love it. Oh, by the way, uh, somebody it. in the chat board, the, the person I was thinking of uh, in Act Actor who, who absorbed kinetic energy, not, uh, not uh, powered energy, energy bolts, was yeah. Strong Guy. So uh, thank you, chat yeah, board, for reminding me of that. All right. Thank you. The live heroes come through. <laughs> so I guess, Ashley. Oh, go ahead, Robert. Well, I was going to say, this is an art challenge for all the sweaties out there. They have to, like, design all of us yeah. as our characters. Uh, you know it. That's what we're really up to. I'm into Fortnite. I'm, I'll be on your team. Ashley? Yeah. Uh, my powers would be that I'm really smart and have a dope utility belt, and I'd obviously be called Robin. I don't know why anyone <laughs> would doubt this about me. Uh, but I would wear a, uh, the original Dick Grayson costume, because, like, all Dick Grayson costumes, it looks way better on a girl. So, yeah. pixie boots and everything. Right on. And Robin works. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to steal the name and the powers of a character that I've already created. It's called Captain Terrific. He basically has the powers of Superman. But one of the abilities he has is that he realizes that he's in a comic book. And so I would use that ability to pierce the reality, see all the different multiverses, and then also spy on Clown Wizard over here. Yep. Pick up, <laughs> uh, pick up Alternate Comics Captain if Terri anthology Captain to read the story about Ca Captain Terrific. Captain Terrific <laughs> and Jaime Lax can appear in a Marvel two team up, but That's it's right. just not going to be Marvel. It might be image. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Oh, that's we, it. We yeah. Hey, that's a, and chat. Tell us what our team yeah. name is. Yeah, you, yeah, chat. The Collider Heroes uh, Sweaties. You have to come up with the, the team name for us eight superheroes, <laughs> and I'll announce it next week. So write in a really cool name. You know what? That's it for the hundredth episode of Collider Heroes. Thank you so much for hanging out with us for ninety minutes of sweaty flavor. I want to thank everyone who showed up to rock the panel boat. Amy, where can people find you online? You can find me at EnthusiAmy on Twitter. And I just want to say thank you all for the amazing art. And I can't believe it's episode 100. This has been such a joy. Right on. 19, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at CBGirl19 on Twitter. And you can also find me on YouTube, Comic Book Girl 19 I just released a Logan review where I just totally just broke down and cried all out throughout the whole thing. And it's very vulnerable <laughs> and very raw. And I was feeling a, little, feeling a little raw. So check it out. 
Nice. I'm going to watch that. Feels. David, where can people find you online? Twitter, Instagram, at GriffinDE every Monday, Collider TV Talk, and Saturdays doing Star Wars Rebels. Awesome. Jason, how about you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Jawin, J A W I I N, every weekday on DCL Access. And then I'm um, already announcing uh, ahead of John, I will be on the 200th episode of Collider Heroes. <laughs> yes, you will. <laughs> yeah, to keep that seat warm, son, because you know it. Everybody's coming back, including you, Ashley. Uh, you can find, find me you? on Twitter and Instagram at Ashley V. Robinson. The V is very important. And uh, every Tuesday, Jason and I ho co host the Geek History Lesson podcast. And this week, we are talking about X23. So if you want to learn uh, everything about her in an hour, go listen to that. And definitely check out their Jupiter Jet. You're going to be able oh, to yeah, get it. Oh, yeah, you can pre order it on Backer Kit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pre order that. What, is it going to be available at like San Diego Comic Con? Will it be out by then? We we, we yeah. may have a preview issue at San Diego Comic Con with a special variant cover. Yeah. Nice, love those variants, yo. Mm -hmm. Robert Meyer Burnett, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Burnett RM or on Instagram at RM Burnett or on Facebook at Robert Meyer Burnett. And I just wanted to give a special shout out to everybody that has sort of become my friends in the extended social networking universe because of this show. I want to thank you guys for having me on this show. I've met a lot of really cool people. I've been conversing with a lot of really cool people. It's nice to sort of share the love for comic books. I had some kid from Pakistan contact me when he heard I was going to sell some of my books because he can't. There's no comic book stores in Pakistan. I'm thinking, huh, a business opportunity. That's right. But, uh, yeah, I, I just think it's been great. It's been really fun to be on this show, and thank you all for interacting with me, and uh, I really appreciate it. John Campia, where can people find you? 100 episodes. Like craziness. Like, like how, like, 100 of them coming and gone. Oh, and it's absolutely crazy. You guys can follow me on Facebook and on Twitter simply at John Campia. To piggyback on Jason's announcement, I'm here to announce I have just greenlit the 200th episode right. of uh, yes. Collider Heroes. So, I'm uh, not sure. leaving the studio. <laughs> <laughs> so you can come back for that. Also, want to let you guys know uh, you're going to find a bunch of us Collider people around WonderCon uh, at the end of this week, or at the end of this week, at the end of this month. Yeah. But also uh, next month, for those of you in the Florida area and all of you traveling to it, we are going to have a big presence at Star Wars Celebration. We got uh, some big announcements coming about some of the things we're going to be doing down there, so stay tuned for that. That's right. The last Jedi uh, trailer will probably drop. Some of us who aren't going to be there are going to be watching it here on our internet, probably crying because Mark Hamill's going to speak. But uh, <laughs> who knows if That's he's going to talk. I heard he's going to be silent through the whole Spoiler movie. Spoiler alert. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for sticking with us for 99 episodes, now 100 episodes. We're in, now we're gonna rock into 101 next next week. It won't be a giant size episode, but I wanted to make this one special, like the annuals in comic books, like the giant size special in comics. So that's why we rock such a big crew. Hopefully we do this more often, because it was a lot of fun. Maybe we'll do it like on the issue 125, son. So you'll see me next week. Just go to Twitter, Instagram, at John Schnapp. I'll see you guys next week. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.